Welcome to Fanfiction Audiobook. Pirate. Nami. Give me back my berry. Chapter 41. The five children finally arrived at the place where Captain Guliki was imprisoned. As the space door slowly opened, the five children finally arrived at the place where Captain Guliki was imprisoned. When he saw the space door, the sadness on Captain Guliki's face disappeared instantly, replaced by a face full of surprise. He suddenly realized that someone was guarding outside the door, so he quickly made a shushing gesture to signal everyone to be careful. Then, Ling Yan and several other children swam in from the space door one after another like fish. They entered a spacious and luxurious guest room, where Captain Guliki was the only one. Despite this, Ling Yan and his companions were still stunned by the scene in front of them, this room was really luxurious. It's worthy of being a palace. Hiss, these royal families are really too rich. Although Ling Yan had been mentally prepared and knew that the royal family was very rich, he couldn't help but exclaimed when he saw it with his own eyes. Captain Guliki, they didn't do anything to you, did they? Noki Gao asked softly, his tone full of concern. I'm fine, don't worry, Noki Gao. He just asked me to think about it here for one night. If I don't agree tomorrow, he will report it directly to the Tianlong people. I can't think of a way to deal with it now, Ling Yan, what do you think? This business is very important to our Kokoja village, and we must not lose it. Captain Guliki's voice was low and firm, and his eyes revealed his worries and expectations for the future. This business is related to the future of Kokoja village. He knows the importance of this business, so he asked Ling Yan without hesitation. Although Ling Yan is still a child, he believes that Ling Yan has a way. Captain Gulichi, don't worry. Let me ask you, is he the only one who wants to take over our business? Ling Yan said slowly. I don't know this yet, but judging from the situation in the past two days, he is indeed the only one. Captain Gulichi thought for a while and answered truthfully. Then there is no problem. Don't worry, Captain Gulichi. I can handle this matter. Now you go back to the hotel and rest. We will handle it here. Ling Yan was full of confidence. That's right, Captain Gulichi, we will handle this matter. Little Nami said, and then opened the space door. Then you have to be careful, understand. If you get hurt, Belmer will come to me for an account. Captain Gulichi warned. We know. Then Captain Gulichi walked into the alien space. He was very curious when he entered here for the first time, but all he saw was a vast expanse of green, with nothing. After Nami came in, she opened the door in another place in the space, and Captain Gulichi returned to the hotel. Seeing Nami coming back, Ling Yan smiled calmly, Girls, let's start a big fight now, let this hateful royal family go to hell. As soon as Ling Yan finished speaking, the four girls immediately showed excitement on their faces. Then everyone put on masks, and the patterns on their masks were all phoenixes. In the past six months, Ling Yan, Nami and Nokigo would wear this mask every time they went out, and now Kuina and Desha have joined. A few minutes later, the action began. Ling Yan and Kuina were responsible for attracting attention, while Nami, Nokigo and Desha were responsible for emptying the treasure house of this royal family. In a flash, Ling Yan and Kuina had arrived at the location of the royal family. For this royal family, Ling Yan's solution was to kill him. Seeing the situation of this royal family at the moment, Ling Yan frowned slightly. He is less than two meters tall, but his face is rounder than a pig. He is really fat. At this moment, he is hugging two slim women and sleeping soundly. Little friend, it's so late, what are you doing here? A sudden voice rang out, instantly startling Ling Yan and Gui Na. Ling Yan felt that he was a little careless. Ling turned around and protected Gui Na behind him, and saw a middle-aged man over two meters tall standing at the door and looking at them indifferently. Sorry, misunderstanding, we took the wrong road. Ling Yan said indifferently. The old man was secretly amazed when he heard Ling Yan's voice. He thought it was a dwarf, but after hearing the voice, he knew that this was actually a child. I took the wrong road and came to the palace, child, do you think I am a fool? After saying that, the middle-aged man walked in. We, we are just too hungry, senior, see you. Forgive me, we'll leave now. After saying that, Ling Yan protected Kuina and slowly retreated, walking towards the back window of the room. This is the palace, child, you can't leave just because you want to. 
After saying that, the middle-aged man immediately rushed towards Ling Yan and Kuina. But the next second, the middle-aged man's eyes immediately showed horror. Fire Emperor, Fire Fist. Boom. Ling Yan suddenly made a move, and a big hole appeared in the gorgeous room in an instant. The huge flames drowned the middle-aged man and directly knocked him out. At this time, the fat pig royal family and the two women woke up. Who are you? Ah. Who are you? Get out. Guards, come in and kill them. Potter, where are you? There was no fear on their faces, because they were royals, used to being high above, and were shouting wildly at this moment. Kuina, get rid of them. Ling Yan rushed out immediately after he finished speaking. He had already felt that the middle-aged man had stood up. Hearing Ling Yan's order, Kuina pulled out the Wado Aikimanji, and then a few screams flashed by. Kuina instantly drew her knife and sent the three people on the bed to hell. Then she rushed out of the room again. As soon as she came out, Kuina met several guards and started fighting. On the other side, Ling Yan found the middle-aged man who was blown away by him. His body was already charred and his hair was burned, but Ling Yan felt from his eyes that he didn't give up. You have good willpower, senior. You were attacked by my flames, but you can still stand up and not die. After Ling Yan finished speaking, he immediately released the flames to circle the yard. This person is stronger than Aaron, and should be equivalent to the combat power of two Aarons. You dare to kill the royal family members here, who are you? Porter was in great pain at this moment. He had finally found a long-term meal ticket, but now it was gone. More importantly, he might have to die here today. Who are we? Shave. Flame strike. With a bang, Porter was beaten into the flames again. Ah. Navy Six Styles. You are a member of the Navy. Screaming sounds rang out in the flames, and Porter rolled inside. He wanted to struggle out, but how could Ling Yan give him another chance? Yes, 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 I am a member of the Navy. So, rest in peace. Puff. Quote. Ling Yan's hand, which was covered with blazing flames, pierced directly through Porter's chest. After dealing with Porter, Ling Yan looked at the guards fighting with Kuina. Kuina was able to fight back and forth with them with her swordsmanship, but she was not dominant. Ling Yan did not help her immediately, as Kuina needed actual combat to improve. At this time, the courtyard was surrounded by the kingdom army. At this moment, everyone's attention was attracted by the fierce battle between Ling Yan and Guina. At this moment, Nami, Nohigo and Desha finally found the royal family's treasure house. Walking into the treasure house, what came into view were several boxes of gold shining with dazzling light. They were neatly placed there, exuding endless luxury. In addition, there were piles of berries and various glittering antiques scattered on the ground. These treasures were so dazzling that the three girls widened their eyes and could hardly believe what they saw. Nokigo, Desha, we are really rich. Nami shouted excitedly, her eyes were completely attracted by the wealth, and even turned into the shape of Barry, and her little face was flushed because of being too excited. Move it quickly, or we will be discovered. Nokigo woke up, now is not the time to show off. Yes, yes, yes. Desha, Nokigo, you are responsible for moving it, I will put it inside. Nami said quickly. Then the three children immediately took action and at this moment they burst out with great strength, excitedly picked up boxes of treasures and ran into the alien space. Outside the yard, piles of kingdom soldiers have surrounded this place, but no one dared to rush in through the flame wall, because the temperature of this flame was too high. At this time, the place burned by the flame has been melted into magma due to the high temperature of the flame. Such a terrifying high temperature, even the army captain of the kingdom army dare not set foot. Quick. Pour water on me. I don't believe there is a flame that is not afraid of water. The army commander shouted loudly. Yes. Army commander. The soldiers of the kingdom army immediately began to act, and buckets of water were brought over and prepared to be poured into the flames. Boom. Ah. Help. The first soldier who poured water had just poured the water in, and the flames suddenly became more intense and instantly swallowed the soldier. How could this happen? Why did the flames burn more vigorously after pouring water in? The army commander didn't understand. Army commander. How is my nephew? You must rescue him. At this time, the fat man wearing a crown appeared. Your majesty, the temperature of this flame is too terrible. It has burned the ground into magma. 
We can't get in. The army commander was also very anxious. His majesty has no descendants. The royal family inside is his nephew, who is the heir to the future king. Asshole. I don't care. If my nephew gets into trouble, you won't have to be the army commander anymore. The king was furious and yelled. This nephew is his only heir. If he dies, the royal family of the kingdom will most likely be replaced by other nobles. Inside the flame wall, Ling Yan also heard what was said outside. He didn't expect that the royal family they killed was the heir to the future king. It seems that after this matter is over, they have to evacuate here quickly. If they attract the navy, it will be troublesome if they are noticed by the navy. Ling Yan looked at Kuina who was still fighting with several guards. At this time, Kuina's physical strength was almost at its limit, and she had been injured in many places. Among the five guards, two had died, and the remaining three were also covered with knife wounds. Ling Yan felt that it was almost done. Shave. He rushed over using the Navy Six styles and thoroughly eliminated the remaining three. Seeing all the enemies fall, Kuina could no longer hold on, and half knelt on the ground with her body supported by Wato Aikimanji. So, so exciting. Ling Yan, I will participate again in the future. Kuina was very excited at this time. It turned out that actual combat was completely different from her previous sparring. Her swordsmanship was very strong. But her physical strength was too poor and she had no experience in fighting the enemy, so she suffered so many injuries this time. Okay, okay, I will definitely call you next time. Let's go find Nami and the others first. Ling Yan said, put Kuina on his back, found Nami and the others with his observation hockey, and immediately ran in the direction of Nami and the others. A few minutes later, Ling Yan came to the front of the treasury gate with Kuina on his back and found that there was also a fight here. Ling Yan, hurry up, get rid of them. Nami shouted immediately when she saw Ling Yan. Ling Yan put Kuina down without saying a word and rushed over immediately. After a few seconds, he killed the seven or eight people guarding the treasury. The soldier fainted. I'm saved. Nokigo also collapsed to the ground instantly. Nokigo, Nami, are you okay? Ling Yan asked immediately. We're fine, we were just too tired just now, we'll be fine after a rest. Nokigo panted. She just wanted to test her current strength, but she didn't expect these soldiers to be so difficult. So after she started fighting with the soldiers, Nami's space gate couldn't take her away immediately. Fortunately, Nami could use the space gate to sweep the formation on the side, otherwise she would have been in real danger just now. The crisis was resolved, Nami opened the space gate, and Desha immediately came out from it. She was too weak and couldn't help in the battle just now, so Nami let her hide in the different space. They must be in the treasure house. Everyone hurry in. At this time, the voice of the kingdom army was also heard from outside. The flames outside were extinguished quickly without Ling Yan, leaving only a circle of magma surrounding the yard. They crossed the lava and found the king's nephew who was killed first, and now they are heading for the treasury. We should go. Ling Yan immediately picked up Kuina and walked into the alien space. Nami, Nokigo, and Desa also went in. When the kingdom army rushed in, they saw only an empty treasury, eight guards fainted on the ground, and several gold coins scattered on the ground. Assholes. Let them run away, immediately launch a nationwide search, and make sure to find this group of daring guys. The army commander roared and ordered. Yes, army commander. The soldiers immediately started to act, and with the army commander's order, a nationwide search was immediately launched. In the alien space, Dessa and Nami were bandaging the wounds of Kuina and Nokigo. The two girls were injured. But at this moment, they fell asleep because they were too tired. The bubbles in their noses were getting bigger and smaller, and their little mouths were opening and closing, which was very cute. They did not immediately go back to find Captain Gurichi and the others, but just called them to let them rest assured. Nami, let's go to the forest to recuperate for two days, and then go back to Shimotsuki village. Yeah, I know. What the little guys didn't know was that the king had already sent a protest to the world government. After all, many people heard Potter's roar. The king was infertile, and the only nephew who could inherit the throne was gone. So at this time, no one dared to provoke the nobles. 
Captain Gurichi's business was unhindered, and it was already very famous in this country, and it began to develop throughout Clover Island. At this time, Ling Yan and his five children were still in the mountains, where there were many prey and no one had to worry about food. But someone is not happy. Ling Yan, can we go back now? Little Nami shouted to Ling Yan who was still exercising with a boulder. After three days in the mountains, Nami spent one day drawing the sea map here, and spent the rest of the time playing in the mountains with Dessa. Now she is tired and bored. Ling Yan heard Nami's words, threw the boulder aside, and said, Well, it's time to go back, where are Nokiko and the others? They are still practicing in the woods, and Dessa is also here. I'll go call them back. Nami was a little happy that she could finally go out to find something delicious, and then she jumped and ran towards the woods. Looking at Nami's cute appearance, Ling Yan was helpless. Since she had the power of the devil fruit, Nami didn't like to practice much. Ling Yan packed up the camp, and Nami also called the other three girls back. The five children returned to town without contacting Captain Gurichi. Now Captain Gulaki is a celebrity here, and they are not suitable to have too much involvement with Captain Gulaki, as that would expose their identities. They will have to stay in the East China Sea in the future. In a luxurious private room of a restaurant, Ling Yan and his friends were sweeping away the delicacies on the table like a whirlwind, and the waiter in charge of serving the dishes was dumbfounded. Boss, another hundred servings. Ling Yan shouted vaguely as he saw that the food on the table was almost gone, his mouth was full. But, but guests, you have already eaten a hundred servings, is this really okay? The waitress said worriedly, she was really afraid that the five children would be stuffed. No problem, go ahead, we are still hungry. Ling Yan said proudly. That's right, that's not enough for us, another hundred servings. Nami echoed, she had eaten barbecue for three days in the mountains and was tired of it. Okay, it's coming right away, guests, wait a moment. Seeing this, the waitress had no choice but to quickly notify the kitchen. Since starting to practice, Ling Yan's appetite has been growing, including Nami, Nokigo, and Kuina. Only little Desha is still like a normal person. But Desha also ate a lot, because she had been hungry before, and only people who have been hungry know that feeling. Boss, give me another 100 servings. After another half an hour, the five children ate up 300 servings of food. After Nami paid the bill, everyone walked out of the private room with round bellies and happy smiles on their faces. Hiss, nigh. They actually ate 300 servings. The staff in the private room looked at Ling Yan and the others in shock as they left. It was not until they went downstairs that they came to their senses and began to clean up the mess in the private room. When the five children came to the lobby on the first floor, they found that everyone had stopped enjoying the food and looked in the same direction. The five children looked over curiously and saw an old man with gray hair and a strong body eating heartily. He has eaten 200 servings, right? More than that. Ling Yan, did you hear that? He ate 200 servings. Nami's eyes widened, her mouth opened wide, her face full of surprise. The other three girls were no exception. They thought their appetites were big enough, but they didn't expect that there were people here who were even bigger than them. Ling Yan, what's wrong with you? Seeing Ling Yan's stunned expression, Nuo Chi Gao asked curiously. Ling Yan came to his senses when he heard Nuo Chi Gao calling him, and said, it's okay, let's go. Then let's go. After leaving the yard, several girls happily suggested going shopping. Anyway, they were very rich now, and as for how rich they were, they knew for themselves. I can't even imagine it myself. Ling Yan frowned slightly, his face was a little solemn. Let's not go yet, Nami, let's go back to Captain Gulichi first. Ah, okay, then let's go back first. Although the girls were a little confused, seeing Ling Yan's solemn expression, they still agreed to Ling Yan's suggestion obediently. The five children walked to an empty alley, passed through Nami's alien space, and soon came to the hotel where Captain Gulichi and his friends were staying. Ling Yan, Nami. Why are you here? Didn't you say you would go back in half a month? First mate aid was a little surprised to see Ling Yan and his friends. Ling Yan did not answer first mate aid, but asked impatiently, Let's not talk about this first, where is Captain Gulichi? I have something to ask him. Captain Gulichi went to attend the party held by that nobleman, and they will continue to sell oranges at the party. 
Ling Yan, what happened? Seeing that Ling Yan's expression was wrong, first mate aide quickly replied. Then do you know the news that the Navy is here? Ling Yan asked immediately. Oh, you ask this, the Navy came yesterday, and I don't know what they are doing here, but the leader is actually the Navy hero Vice Admiral Garp. First mate aide replied immediately, and when he talked about Garp, his face was full of admiration. Vice Admiral Garp. Is it the Navy hero, Vice Admiral Garp? Sri Lanka. Such a big figure actually came here. Navy hero. Knowing that the Navy hero Garp came to this country, the four girls began to sigh. That's right, the strong old man in the restaurant just now was Vice Admiral Garp. It's just that he didn't wear the Navy's righteous cloak at that time. Everyone in this world is face blind, and no one can't recognize his identity. First mate aide didn't know the purpose of the Navy coming here, but Ling Yan probably thought of it, probably because of the incident three days ago. It is estimated that the king reported this matter to the world government, and then the world government would let the navy come. This is the East China Sea, so Garp will naturally take on this task directly. After all, a powerful devil fruit user appeared in the East China Sea, not to mention that Clover Island is so close to Windmill Village. If he doesn't investigate it clearly, the old man won't feel at ease. In the afternoon, after Captain Gurichi came back, he also confirmed that Ling Yan's guess was correct. The Navy came here because the king protested to the world government. The old man was very happy. Captain Gurichi, have you heard when these Navy men will leave? Ling Yan asked curiously. Well, I haven't heard about this, but they didn't search after they came. But the Navy hero, Vice Admiral Garp, eats and drinks in the restaurant here every day. Captain Gurichi thought for a while and said. At this time, Nami remembered Ling Yan's abnormality in the restaurant today, and thought of the old man who could eat a lot, and she understood it all at once. Ling Yan, the person in the restaurant today is the Navy hero Garp, right? Nami's eyes lit up and asked excitedly. After Nami said this, the other three girls also remembered it. They didn't expect that the person was actually the Navy hero Garp. You are still happy, he is coming for us, fortunately he didn't investigate Captain Gurichi and you. Ling Yan looked at everyone and said helplessly. The four girls reacted and knew that Garp was coming for them, and their little faces began to panic. Don't worry, we were all wearing masks at the time, and our clothes were different, so they couldn't recognize us. Ling Yan comforted the little ones softly. As long as he didn't use the fruit ability in front of Garp, he would never find Ling Yan and the others, after all, the IQ of the monkey family was higher than that of Dragon. But, that's the Navy hero Garp. Disha's face was a little pale. In the East China Sea, they grew up listening to Garp's stories. Although they didn't know how powerful Garp was, Garp's reputation was too great to scare them. Then, why don't we go back to Shimotsuki village first? Ling Yan suggested. Okay, okay, let's go back to Shimotsuki village first. When we get to Shimotsuki village, the navy won't be able to find us. As soon as Ling Yan said this, Nami agreed immediately. The other three girls also nodded repeatedly. They were really worried that they would be caught by the navy if they stayed here. Ling Yan also understood them. After all, Garp was too famous. Then the five children said goodbye to Captain Gurichi and went to the back mountain. In the back mountain, Ling Yan turned into a full beast form and immediately took the girls to the sky. In the town, Garp was strolling on the street after having a good meal. He naturally didn't need to digest his food because he would return his life. He just wanted to stroll around the street to see if there was any news. Suddenly, Garp looked up at the sky in the back mountain. Phoenix. No, no, it's bigger than Marco's Phoenix. Is it really a Phoenix? Garp looked at the huge bird in the distance and said to himself. Vice Admiral Garp, this should be the person who killed the king's nephew three days ago. Bogart walked out of the dark and said in a deep voice. It must be. I didn't expect a mythical beast type ability user to appear in the East China Sea. It's really a bit troublesome. Garp said in a relaxed tone, and it was unknown what he was thinking. He's gone now. Should we go back to the Navy headquarters to report? Bogart asked. You can use Den Den Mushi to report. I haven't been back to see Luffy and Ace for a long time. I have to go back to see my grandchildren. Garp thought of his two grandchildren and showed a kind smile on his face. 
Yes. Vice Admiral Garp. Bogart took the order and immediately reported the mission to the headquarters using Den Den Mushi. On the Navy headquarters side, when they heard that Garp was going back to see his grandchildren, they wanted to get angry, but thinking of the mythical beast type ability user who appeared in the East China Sea, it didn't matter if Garp stayed in the East China Sea for a few more days. Then they happily gave Garp a few days off. On Ling Yan's side, when the group returned to Shimotsuki village, it was already dark. Finally, we don't have to worry about being caught by the Navy. Nami was relieved, exhaled a breath, and smiled again on her face. Ha ha ha, Nami, why are you so afraid of the Navy? Anyway, they don't know it's us. He didn't even know it when he stood in front of Garp today. Ling Yan patted Nami's shoulder and laughed. That old man gives me a very strong feeling. Kuina, who is smiling just now, withdrew her face and showed a solemn look. Of course he is very strong, otherwise how could he become a hero of the Navy? Let's go back first, Ling Yan said softly. Garp can create an island with one punch, how can he not be strong? Yeah, yeah, go back to sleep, I'm so tired today, Dessa said a little tiredly. The five children then walked from the mountain to East Shindojo. The reason why the girls felt tired was mainly because they were too nervous today. Father. Good evening, Mr. Koshiro. Mr. Koshiro, why haven't you slept yet? Everyone went back. At the entrance of Ishin Dojo, they saw Koshiro standing at the entrance. He knew they were back and was waiting at the entrance. So they all bowed and greeted Koshiro. It's still early. Zoro has just returned. Are you tired after being out for a few days? Koshiro asked softly, his voice still so slow. He didn't ask the children what they did when they went out. The children will definitely have their own ideas when they grow up. As long as they can come back safely, it's fine. Of course I'm tired. I'm so sleepy. I want to sleep so much. Dessa said sweetly. Yeah, Mr. Koshiro, let's go back and rest first. Nami also felt a little sleepy when she returned to Ishin Dojo. Since you are sleepy, go back and rest quickly. You are allowed to get up later tomorrow. Koshiro narrowed his eyes slightly, and a faint smile appeared on his face. We know, Mr. Koshiro. The children walked past Koshiro and walked towards the room where they lived. Koshiro watched the children leave, feeling very satisfied, because he noticed that Kuina's aura was different. This time, the children must have encountered many enemies. In the dark, Zoro looked at Kuina who was leaving, his eyes turning faintly, and he didn't know what he was thinking. Wow. It's so comfortable to lie down. As soon as she entered the room, Desha lay directly on the tatami, with enjoyment written all over her face. Ha ha ha. Desha, your little belly is exposed, be careful not to catch a cold, Noki laughed and reminded. Huh. Kuina, are you going to sleep in our room today? Ling Yan asked curiously when he saw Kuina lying down. No, no, we are all partners, shouldn't partners sleep together? Kuina replied without looking back. Yes, yes, partners should sleep together, so comfortable, Nami lay beside Kuina, closed her eyes and said softly. Ling Yan opened his mouth, not knowing what to say, and just shook his head, then turned off the light and lay down. After a while, five snoring sounds were heard in the room. The five children from Shuangyu village fell asleep peacefully, but in the neighboring windmill village, two children were being beaten. That tragic howling sound. The villagers of the entire windmill village couldn't sleep and opened the door. The next morning, before the sun showed up, several little brats got up anxiously. Although Koshiro said they could sleep a little longer, these little guys knew that laziness was not a good thing, and after this incident, they also realized that they were still far from being good. When Zoro and Kuina met in the morning, he immediately noticed something wrong. He keenly felt that Kuina's momentum had become stronger, and this change was particularly obvious, as if he could feel it directly. So, Zoro worked harder than ever in today's training. He didn't want the gap between him and Kuina to get bigger and bigger. In the back mountain, several children were already practicing on their own, and even Nami started to take it seriously this time. Daisy, you have just started practicing, don't be too anxious. We are still young, as long as we keep training, we will definitely become stronger in the future. Ling Yan saw that Daisy suddenly increased her training volume several times, and couldn't help but say worriedly. 
But Daisy shook her head firmly and said with gritted teeth, I can do it. Since returning from this mission, Daisy has deeply realized her weakness. She knows very well that if she can't help at all in the battle, wouldn't she become a waste? She doesn't want to become like that. Daisy's heart is full of reluctance and determination, clenching her fists tightly, with unyielding determination in her eyes. She wants to prove her worth with practical actions, and no longer be the weak chicken who can only watch from the side. No matter how difficult it is, she will grit her teeth and persevere, and work hard towards the goal of becoming stronger. Ling Yan saw Daisy's stubborn little expression and stopped persuading her. He knew that the training of other girls had also increased a lot, and suddenly he was a little worried. Although the people in this world can't be bad, the nutrition must keep up with the training, so he has already set his sights on the king of the near sea. Alas, how to deal with it? Ling Yan had a headache. His ability was not suitable for fishing. At night, Captain Gurichi called and told Ling Yan that their navy had withdrawn, which made Ling Yan and Nami feel much more relieved. Although Garp was a person with a lack of nerves, his strength was too strong, and Ling Yan didn't want to deal with him yet. After dinner, the children went back to the room to wash and rest, but Kuina didn't come back. She wanted to talk to her father about something. In the corridor of the yard, Koshiro and Kuina were kneeling in front of a tea table. Koshiro looked at Kuina with a serious look, and Kuina's face was full of stubbornness and affirmation. Kuina, have you really thought about it? Koshiro's tone was very serious. Yes, father. After this battle, I found that only actual combat can make my kendo go to the next level, so I will never give up. Kuina said firmly. Koshiro had a headache. On the one hand, Kuina was still young and it was still early for her to become an adult. On the other hand, Kuina's goal was to become the strongest in the world, and Koshiro was not optimistic about this. But looking at Kuina's determined eyes, his thoughts were somewhat shaken. For a while, both father and daughter were silent. After a few minutes of silence, Koshiro narrowed his eyes, showed a doting smile, and said, Kuina, father promised you that you can go to sea in advance, but father has a condition. You say. Kuina's face was full of excitement. Take care of yourself, don't let yourself get hurt too much, otherwise father will worry. Koshiro said gently. Father. Time passed quickly, and half a month had passed in a blink of an eye. Mr. Koshiro, thank you for your teachings during this period. We have learned a lot of kendo knowledge. At the entrance of Yishin Dojo, Ling Yan and the other four were saying goodbye to Koshiro. Hee hee, no need to thank me, you are all good kids, come on, I hope I can hear your names on the sea in the future. Koshiro encouraged the children. He really liked these children, and they were all excellent. I will. Yes, Mr. Koshiro, you will definitely hear my name on the sea in the future. We will work hard. The children said one after another, their tone full of confidence. After saying goodbye to Koshiro, Ling Yan and the other four children began to walk slowly back and walked out of the Yishin Dojo. Everyone looked back frequently, with reluctance and expectation in their eyes. Let's go. Let's go to Clover Island quickly. Captain Gurichi and the others are still waiting for us. Ling Yan said with a long sigh. Ling Yan, Nami looked at Ling Yan, and she looked so worried that she almost cried. Ling Yan, how about, let's wait a little longer, Nokigo also said. Woo woo woo, Ling Yan, why doesn't Kuina go with us? We are already partners. Dessa cried loudly. Don't cry, Kuina is not yet an adult and can't go to sea. Believe me, we will meet again in the future, on the sea. Ling Yan said firmly. After that, the children continued to head to the back mountain, but they exuded an atmosphere of reluctance to part with their partners. Ling Yan, Nami, why are you so slow? I have been waiting for you for a long time. Quote. Suddenly a voice came. Ling Yan and his companions looked up the mountain in surprise. Seeing the little figure carrying a bag and holding the Wado Aikimanji, everyone's faces showed excitement and they were extremely happy. Kuina. Ling Yan and his companions immediately ran towards Kuina, shouting excitedly, and their voices echoed in the mountains. Asshole, I thought you wouldn't go with us. Nami was so excited that she choked a little. Woo woo woo, Kuina, we can always be together in the future. Desha rushed to Kuina and hugged her tightly, tears streaming down her face. The other three also rushed forward, surrounded Kuina, and released their inner joy and excitement. 
We are partners, of course I have to go with you. He he he. Kuina's face was filled with a bright smile. This kind of happiness was unprecedented. She took a deep breath and felt the breath of freedom in the air. It was a wonderful taste that could not be described in words. It turned out that Kuina had already set off in advance and arrived at the mountain first. But before going up the mountain, she deliberately went to find Zoro and started a farewell duel, the 2002nd battle. After this fierce battle, the winner was still Kuina. It's just that the result of the battle is no longer important. The two made an agreement to meet again on the vast ocean in the future, and then they will compete again. At this moment, Kuina is about to embark on a new journey with her companions with a vision of the future. What awaits them ahead will be endless possibilities. Somewhere in the mountains, Zoro looked up at the slowly receding phoenix and shouted, Kuina, don't lose. The weather was very good, but the weather was very good. It was already afternoon when we arrived at Clover Island. Ling Yan, with the help of Minister Sabella, our oranges have become popular all over Clover Island. As soon as he met Captain Garachi, he couldn't hold back his excitement and shared his gains in the past half month. Great. By the way, Captain Garachi, no one should want to ruin your business during this period, right? Ling Yan asked. Nami and Nokigo were also very happy to hear the good news. In the future, their Kokoja village will be truly rich. No, Sabella has now become the Minister of Finance of this country, so no one dares to take our business, and there are rumors that the king intends to pass the throne to Minister Sabella. Captain Gurichi said happily. It was a wise decision for him to cooperate with Sabella. More than half a month had passed, and the nobles, especially those who had not bought oranges, were now impatient and urged Captain Gurichi to bring the second batch of oranges as soon as possible. Captain Gurichi naturally accepted the money given by others. Then, the merchant ship set off early the next morning and returned to Kokoja village. Now the orange production in Kokoja village is very large, and a large number of oranges mature every day. He believes that the output of Kokoja village can definitely meet the needs of the nobles here. Facing the gentle sea breeze, the merchant ship slowly sailed towards the deep sea. Ling Yan was still sitting high on the mast observation deck as before, Nohigo was training on the deck, Nami was testing the climate here and making records, and Kuina and Desha were on a ship for the first time, feeling very novel, and were running around excitedly on the deck. Seeing this scene, Ling Yan couldn't help but wonder, should they also prepare a ship of their own? Otherwise, when they enter the Grand Line in the future, some islands are too far apart, and they can't rely on him to fly for a few days and nights. Thinking of this, Ling Yan planned to discuss it with a few partners after returning to Kokoja village. The merchant ship has been sailing on the sea for almost two days and has now reached the waters near Function Island. At this time, Nami suddenly asked Captain Gurichi to stop sailing. What's wrong, Nami, why can't we continue sailing? Captain Gurichi asked with some confusion. Others also looked over curiously. Storm, there is a big storm coming. Captain Gurichi, we must go ashore to avoid it, or bypass this route to avoid the big storm ahead. Nami's voice was crisp but serious. Is it true, Nami? Captain Gurichi's face also became solemn. The same is true for others. A storm, or a big storm, will definitely be accompanied by super-intensity rainfall and a tsunami. Their merchant ships will definitely not be able to get through this severe weather. I'm sure, Captain Gurichi, we must leave here now. Nami answered firmly. It's not possible to bypass this route. The other current is too far away from here. But the nearest island is Junshou Island. I heard that there are many beasts there, and there are mountain gods. We can't go up there at all. Captain Gurichi suddenly became anxious. Then what should we do? This is a super storm. It will definitely produce a tsunami. Our ship can't hold on. That's right, what can we do? The route cannot be changed, and the nearest Junsho Island cannot be reached. The sailors and guards began to get anxious. Captain Gurichi and everyone present had no doubts about Nami's judgment, just because Nami had the qualifications of an excellent navigator. Captain Gurichi, are you talking about the rare beast island? Ling Yan jumped down from the mast and walked over. That's right. There is a terrible legend there. Anyone who goes to the rare beast island will be cursed by the mountain god. Anyone who leaves the island will go crazy. Gurichi said in a deep voice. 
On one side is a big storm, and on the other side is the curse of the mountain god. In an instant, everyone's face turned pale. Ling Yan. Nami looked at Ling Yan pitifully, hoping that he could save everyone. After confirming that it was the rare beast island, Ling Yan was relieved. The so-called curse and mountain god were just pirates who were forgotten on the island a long time ago. Captain Gurichi, we will land on the rare beast island. Don't worry, everyone. The so-called mountain god is just a lie, not to mention that I am here. Even if there is a mountain god, he will fight. But I, Ling Yan said calmly, landing on Junshou Island. Is this really feasible? That's a curse. Let's fight. Even if we go crazy, it's better than being swept to the bottom of the sea by the tsunami and feeding the fish. Yes, Captain Guliki, let's land on Junshou Island. After listening to Ling Yan's words, everyone's fear at the beginning gradually turned into courage, and the source of this courage was Ling Yan. They felt that Ling Yan was more powerful than that mountain god. Okay. In that case, let's land on Junshou Island. Captain Gulichi gave the order with a resolute look and a firm tone. Everyone echoed and expressed their approval of his decision. After all, if you are swept into the sea by a tsunami, it means losing your life. Instead of fearing the so-called curse, it is better to face the predicament bravely. So, the merchant ship quickly adjusted its direction and rushed towards the Junshou Island. Not long after, a shocking storm arrived as expected. The wind was howling, the rain was pouring, the lightning and thunder were shining together, and the huge tsunami was surging like the end of the world. Although Captain Gulichi and his party had left the dangerous sea in time, they could still feel the endless fear brought by the storm. Due to the influence of the tsunami, even if they hid so far away, there were still raging waves from time to time. At this moment, Nami found that she could not accurately predict how long the storm would last. Faced with this situation, everyone worked together and drove the merchant ship forward with all their strength. After more than half an hour of difficult sailing, the merchant ship, pushed by layers of huge waves, finally gradually approached Junshou Island. From a distance, the outline of Junshou Island was clearly visible, as if it was a life-saving oasis, bringing people a glimmer of life and hope. We are almost there, everyone keep working hard. Captain Gurichi shouted to cheer everyone up. Oh. Quote. Seeing the land, everyone instantly breathed a sigh of relief, because the huge waves behind were too scary. Only Ling Yan on the side became a little alert. He found that someone had landed on the island, but he didn't know who it was. Until everyone approached the coast and saw the warship with the dog head. It turned out to be this guy Garp. The merchant ship just docked, and the two groups noticed each other. The other side was the navy, and it was the navy that came to investigate them not long ago, which made the people on the merchant ship feel a little uneasy. Only Ling Yan was calm. He knew that he couldn't hide. Not to mention Karp, his mysterious adjutant Bogart was not a simple character either. He must not be a weak hand to be able to serve as an adjutant beside Karp for so many years. Qingzi was also promoted from the position of Karp's adjutant. Captain Gulichi, when they come over, you will negotiate with them. Others should not have too much contact with them. Ling Yan whispered to Captain Gulichi. I know, don't worry, Ling Yan. I'm a businessman, I'm good at this kind of thing. Captain Gurichi assured Ling Yan. The other crew members were very confident. They had been doing business for many years and understood the ways of the world. They had a set of methods to deal with an upright navy like Garp. Ling Yan slapped his head and almost forgot that if Captain Gurichi didn't have some skills, he would have been eaten by those people outside without even a bone residue left. He didn't say anything more and went to play with Nami and the other girls. The five of them were still children, so they were naturally more lively and cute. The surging waves were still hitting the coast. It seemed that they couldn't go out to sea in a short time, and everyone began to set up camp on the island. After sailing on the sea for most of the day, no one had eaten anything, so the chef began to prepare a sumptuous meal. Just as everyone was enjoying the food, Garp came over with his adjutant Bogart. It looked like he wanted to eat for free. Vice Admiral Garp, it turns out it's you guys, please take a seat. Captain Gurichi invited enthusiastically. Garp was a little overwhelmed by Captain Gurichi's enthusiasm. Bogart whispered something in Garp's ear, and Garp remembered Captain Gurichi's identity. 
Wow, ha ha ha, it turns out it's Captain Garachi, I still remember you guys. Garp's expression remained unchanged, and he sat directly in the main seat at Captain Garachi's invitation. Captain Garachi knew that Vice Admiral Garp didn't remember his identity, but he didn't care. He chatted with Garp very enthusiastically, leaving him no chance to notice the children. This Vice Admiral Garp is so shameless. Desha looked at Garp's shameless appearance and whispered to Nami. Nami agreed very much. She didn't expect that Vice Admiral Garp, a dignified naval hero, would be like this in private. Seeing this, Ling Yan just wanted to say that this was all a filter brought by fame. Captain Gurichi, I didn't see you guys with your kids a while ago. Why are you still with your kids now? Garp asked casually. Hearing Garp suddenly mention them, Nami and the others started to get a little nervous. Hey, old man Garp, I heard that you used to chase the Pirate King. Is that true? You're not lying, are you? Ling Yan asked loudly, and his tone sounded very frank. Asshole. Of course it's true. How could Roger be my opponent? That's why I can chase him all the time. Garp started to curse Ling Yan when he heard Ling Yan dare to question his record. Ling Yan didn't show weakness and kept cursing at Garp. For a while, the people on the merchant ship were a little scared, fearing that Garp would really get angry. Only Ling Yan knew that Garp would not bother with them, especially since Ling Yan was still young and had an advantage as a child, although for Garp, there was no big difference between an adult and a child. After a banquet, Vice Admiral Garp finally had enough to eat and drink and left. At this time, Captain Gurichi and his group finally breathed a sigh of relief. Skoku and I, Ling Yan, you were actually swearing at Vice Admiral Garp just now. Little Nami's big eyes widened even wider, with an expression of disbelief on her face. Several girls suddenly admired Ling Yan very much. After all, there weren't many people who could swear at Vice Admiral Garp, right? Captain Gurichi and a few of the merchants knew that Ling Yan was just diverting Vice Admiral Garp's attention so that he had no time to ask Ling Yan and their affairs. On the other side, Vice Admiral Garp chewed Senbei in his mouth and said happily, those children are not simple. They have very good courage, especially the boy and the girl holding a big knife. They are all good seedlings, ha 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 ha. Vice Admiral Garp, do you want to invite them to join the Navy? Bogart saw Vice Admiral Garp so appreciative. The children asked curiously. I have this idea, but I guess they are not happy. Bogart, pay more attention to these children in the future. Garp said calmly. This was his intuition, so he did not directly invite them just now. Okay, Vice Admiral Garp. Bogart remained silent. Since Vice Admiral Garp did not take direct action, he would not do anything unnecessary now. Just pay attention to them in the future. Ling Yan and the others did not know that they had been targeted by the old man Garp at this time. At this moment, several children got into the tent. Nami took out a lot of food from the alien space and began to feast on it. They had not eaten enough at the banquet just now. The storm lasted for a day and a night before it stopped. After the wind and waves stopped, the two teams continued to set off. Since Garp and his team were going to Rogue Town, the merchant ship and Garp's warship had a common route along the way. But Captain Gurichi did not care. With the warship next to them, they did not have to be afraid even if they encountered pirates. That's not right, Captain Gurichi. Didn't they say there was a mountain god on Juncho Island? Why didn't we see it? Desha suddenly asked. So everyone reacted. Yes, they had been on Juncho Island for so long and didn't find anything unusual. Isn't it better if there is no mountain god? This shows that the rumors about Juncho Island are all false. Besides, Vice Admiral Garp was there at the time. Even if there was a mountain god, it wouldn't dare to come out. Captain Gurichi said indifferently. Think about it, it would be best if there was no mountain god curse. Only Ling Yan knew that Vice Admiral Garp was here, and there were so many navy soldiers. How could the pirate stuck in the box dare to come out and make trouble when he saw this scene? After this big storm, the return journey was calm and even pirates were not encountered. Vice Admiral Garp, thank you for your escort along the way. Captain Gurichi thanked. When they arrived at the waters near Hobby Island, the merchant ship and the warship were finally separated. Hobby Island and Rogue Town. Wahahaha. I didn't escort you specifically, I just stopped by. Let's go, Bogart. Cap laughed, but didn't admit it. 
Watching the Doghead warship leave, Captain Guliki ordered to return to Kokoja village. This place is not far from Kokoja village. After more than half an hour of sailing, the merchant ship finally docked in Kokoja village. Captain G.U. Liki, you are finally back. Captain G.U. Liki, this trip was quite smooth, right? Captain G.U. Liki. Seeing Captain G.U. Liki's merchant ship coming back, the people in the port were extremely excited and flattering. After all, the price Captain G.U. Liki paid for oranges this time was really not low. Ha 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 ha, of course, villagers rest assured, the price I will pay for oranges will increase by 20% from the original price in the future. Captain G.U. Liki announced happily. Really, Captain G.U. Liki? The villagers asked excitedly. Of course I've found a good sales channel. The oranges from our Kokoja village can be sold at a good price in the future. Captain Gulichi answered truthfully. Great. Captain Gulichi, you are so great. That's great. We will finally be rich in the future. Seeing Captain Gulichi so sincere, the people surrounding the port were extremely excited and praised Captain Gulichi. Captain Gulichi and the crew were also very happy. Although the price they paid for the oranges increased a lot, they could still make a lot of money. Ling Yan and his friends were not interested in joining in the fun. As soon as they returned to the port, they returned to Nami's studio on the top floor of their home through Nami's space. Belmare, we are back. Belmare, we are back. This time we brought gifts for you and Aegean. As soon as they returned to the manor, Nami and Nokigo shouted excitedly. When Kuina and Desha came out of the alien space, they were immediately shocked by the large manor in front of them. They didn't expect Ling Yan and his family's home to be so big. Shish, this house is so big. Desha looked at the manor in front of her and her eyes widened. Ling Yan, your house is so big. Kuina felt that their Ishin Dojo was already very big, but it was still not as big as the manor in front of them. Ha ha ha, of course, this will also be your home in the future. Let's go, I'll take you to see Bel Mel. As soon as he got home, Ling Yan happily pulled Kuina and Desha and walked towards Bel Mel. So, the oranges in our Kokoja village can be sold at a good price in the future. Ling Yan brought Kuina and Desha to the hall and saw Bel Mel asking about the oranges. Of course, we have contributed to this, Nami boasted proudly. Belmer, this is Kuina and Desha, Kuina, Desha, she is our gentle, beautiful and generous Belmer, Ling Yan introduced both parties happily. Belmer, hello, Desha said shyly. Belmer, I'll trouble you in the future. Compared with Desha, Kuina was much more generous. Hello, Desha, Kuina, you can stay here in the future. Belmer held a cigarette in his mouth, looked at the two little girls, and showed a gentle smile. Ling Yan had already told Belmer about Kuina and Desha. For both parties, they had already communicated through Den Den Mushi, so everyone was very happy to meet now. When everyone was getting to know each other, Ajian also came. He had just patrolled the Kokoja village with the escort team. After learning that Captain Gurichi had returned, he also hurried to Belmer's house. After all, Ling Yan and the other children had been away for more than half a month, so Ajian was still very worried. Now that he saw that the children were back safely, he was relieved. After being apart for more than half a month, the first thing to do when returning home was of course to have a banquet. So before the evening, the manor was already filled with the aroma of meat. Now that Kuina and Desha are added, the banquet will be even more lively. Polaris Island Rogue Town Naval Base. Due to the arrival of Vice Admiral Garp, the naval officers and soldiers of the entire base were extremely excited. After all, Vice Admiral Garp is a hero of the Navy. In the base commander's office, Garp was learning about the situation of the East China Sea Navy and the pirates before. The East China Sea is Garp's hometown, so of course he would pay more attention to it. After understanding the business, Garp told the base commander Hoba about Ling Yan and the other children. Ling Yan. Colonel Hoba was a little confused about this matter. Where did this handsome young man come from? He was so lucky that he actually got the favor of the hero of the Navy, Vice Admiral Garp, and let him more. Pay attention. Wow, ha 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 ha, that's right, this is a very courageous little guy. I tell you, this little guy actually dared to curse at me in front of Bogart. Speaking of Ling Yan, Karp seemed in a good mood. He had never met such an interesting child. 
cursed with you in front of Adjutant Bogart. Colonel Hoba was instantly shocked. You know, Bogart is a master of kendo. He will always exude a fierce momentum, but hearing Lieutenant General Karp say that this child actually dared to curse with Lieutenant General Karp in front of Bogart, well, it's really courageous. No wonder Lieutenant General Karp values this child named Ling Yan so much. I know, I will pay attention to it in the future, Lieutenant General Karp. By the way, Lieutenant General Karp, do you have a photo of this child? Colonel Hoba asked. Then Bogart, who was silent on the side, took out a few photos and handed them to Hoba. Colonel Hoba took the photo and was surprised when he saw the people in the photo, it's these two children. Huh. Hoba, do you know them? Garp asked. Colonel Hoba came back to his senses and said, yes, Vice Admiral Garp, I know the two children named Ling Yan and Nami. They have been to Rogue Town before. I saw the extraordinariness of this child at the beginning and wanted to invite him to join the Navy, but was rejected. They have been to Rogue Town. Garp looked at Colonel Hoba with surprise. He never expected that Ling Yan had been to this place. At this moment, Colonel Hoba told Vice Admiral Garp in detail what happened during that period, of course, it also involved the entanglement between Ling Yan and Marino. Garp became more and more interested in Ling Yan, and then he immediately gave an order to Hoba, and everything about Ling Yan and other children in the future must be recorded in detail and accurately. There is no doubt that based on Garp's many years of experience, outstanding young people like Ling Yan will definitely become famous in the vast ocean in the future. Whether these children eventually choose to join the Navy or become pirates, the Navy needs to collect and organize their relevant information. However, Ling Yan and others who are far away from Rogue Town are completely unaware of what is happening here. After a long time, the five children return to the village of Kokoja. Several days have passed since they returned to the village of Kokoja, and the five children have returned to orderly training. The training room of the manor is super luxurious, with all kinds of auxiliary training equipment, which makes Kuina and Desha super happy. They are super serious about training their bodies. Hey! Kuina, Desha, Nokigo, why are you here so early today? It was just dawn when Ling Yan came to the training room and saw that the three little guys had already started training here, which was really earlier than him. I want to become the world's strongest swordsman, of course I have to exercise my body better. Kuina said seriously while exercising. The training equipment here is very useful for physical training. She didn't touch it when she was in Ishin Dojo. Now that she is here, of course she has to work harder. Yes, I want to become stronger too. In the future, I want to beat 10. Dessa also looked very hard. Ever since she couldn't help at all that night on Clover Island, she vowed to become stronger. Seeing this, Ling Yan was very satisfied. It's good to become stronger. After becoming stronger, he can be a young master, ha 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 ha. Finally, Ling Yan looked at Nokigo who was doing low oxygen exercise and asked, Kuina wants to become the strongest in the world. Dessa said that she will beat 10 in the future. What do you think, Nokigo? Me. I want to improve my breath holding time in the sea, so that you and Nami, two landlubbers, won't fall into the sea and drown. Nokigo said without looking back. Uh underscore. Ahahaha, thank you for your hard work, Nokigo, Nami and I will rely on you in the future. Ling Yan laughed dryly, and then began his own training. While Ling Yan and the other four were training hard in the training room, Nami did not slack off. She had gotten up early and was studying hard in her studio. And she had a small piece of sea stone in her hand, so she could train the resistance of sea stone while studying. On the sea, the most important thing is not the captain or the fighter, but the navigator. As their navigator, Nami naturally would not forget her mission. She needed to study hard and absorb all kinds of knowledge about the climate. While the five children were busy training, Belmir also got up. The children all wanted to work hard to become stronger, and Belmir certainly agreed with both hands. What she had to do now was to ensure that the children could keep up with their daily nutrition. This was not an easy job, after all, the five children were growing up quickly, and each of them was a big eater. After the morning training, it was already 9 a.m. The five children came to the restaurant. Belmere was not there, but the delicious dishes she prepared had already filled the table. I'm going to eat. Kuina's saliva kept flowing when she saw so many delicious foods. 
Without waiting for everyone, she picked up two pieces of bone meat and started eating. It smells so good. Bell Mare's dishes are so delicious. The other four children also sat down and started eating to replenish the energy consumed this morning. After all, the more you eat, the greater your physical potential. As a result, the dishes on the table were reduced at a speed visible to the naked eye. In just half an hour, 300 servings of dishes were swept away by the five children. Ah, I'm full. Satisfied. It's so delicious. I, I seem to be full. Several children lay directly on the ground, stroking their round bellies with happiness on their faces. After breakfast, several children began to learn cultural knowledge. There is no school in the world of one piece. You have to learn by yourself. Everyone is the same in this regard. No one gives up learning because of poverty. At noon, the five children began their own skill training. Ling Yan wants to develop the power of the devil fruit and exercise his body. Nami is also training her body so that her space can open the door farther. Kuina and Nokigo are both practicing swordsmanship. Now both of them have their own famous swords, so they can practice from time to time. Of course, since Kuina has experienced actual combat, Nokigo is no match for Kuina, but Nokigo is not much worse, after all, she has been fighting for half a year. Finally, there is Desha. She is doing the early training according to the training notes of the Navy Six styles brought back by Ling Yan. She thinks the Navy Six styles is very suitable for her. In this way, each. After completing their training, everyone started to relax their bodies and minds in the afternoon, such as playing games. Of course, there is also hunting. The meat in Kokoja village is generally ordinary fish meat, and the energy contained in these fish meats cannot meet the needs of Ling Yan and others. So they can only go to the mountains to hunt by themselves. They only want those beasts that have reached the level of beast kings. Now it is not so easy for Ling Yan to eat the meat of sea kings. At least he has not seen the king of the near sea for so long since he came here. In Kokoja village, the five children live a fulfilling life like this every day, and everyone is working hard to grow up. Huh. Daisy, what book are you reading? In Nami's studio, Daisy was concentrating on a book she had never seen before. Are you talking about this one? I borrowed this from the village doctor. I think this book is very interesting. Daisy raised the book in her hand and said excitedly. Doctor's book. Desha, are you going to learn medicine? Nami asked curiously. Well, I just think the content is very interesting. Nami, look here, it actually says that people can survive by cutting out the intestines in their stomachs. Desha pointed to a passage in the medical book and said. What? How is this possible? Can people survive by cutting out the intestines? Impossible. Nami's first reaction was unbelievable. It's true, Nami, look, the appendicitis mentioned here is a disease. The medical book says that after getting this disease, as long as the intestines are cut out, the person can be saved. Desha tried to explain to Nami. So you are here, what are you discussing? Tell us too. At this time, Ling Yan, Nohigo and Kuina also came to the top floor and heard Desha and Nami talking about cutting out the intestines. Ling Yan, come and see, the medical book that Desha is reading says that people can survive by cutting out the intestines. Is this true? Nami pointed to the book in Desha's hand and said. Cut out the intestines. Why do we have to cut out the intestines? Kuina and Nochigao asked one after another. Can you still live after cutting out the intestines? They didn't understand. They only knew that the white knife goes in and the red knife comes out. Medical book. Dasha was actually reading a medical book. This aroused Ling Yan's interest. Several children came over to take a look. After Dasha's explanation, everyone finally understood, and Ling Yan also knew why Dasha said that cutting out the intestines would allow survival. It turned out that this was appendicitis. But what Ling Yan didn't expect was that Dasha was actually interested in medical skills. It felt like a doctor would emerge among them in the future. After a month of rest, Ling Yan and Nami are going out to sea again. Ling Yan also plans to take Nami to finish drawing the nautical chart of the East China Sea Islands before adulthood. Nami has been to Clover Island and Shimotsuki village before, and she is familiar with the climate there. This time, they are going to Sixus Island, south of Shimotsuki village. After understanding the general climate problem, 
Ling Yan and his five friends decided to take Captain Gurichi's merchant ship and disembark when they arrived at Clover Island. The nautical chart bought from the merchant was very blurry, and Nami judged that Sixus Island was not large. To the north of it is Kumate Island. They planned to go to Sixus Island first, then Kumate Island, then Don Island, and finally return to Clover Island with Captain Gurichi. Rough Diagram Garp swept the East China Sea a month ago, and now the East China Sea is very calm. After a few days of sailing, Ling Yan and his five children followed Captain Gurichi's merchant ship to Clover Island. It was still the familiar back mountain. Ling Yan and his friends killed a Beast King and were now replenishing their energy with the Beast King meat. After eating and drinking, Nami took out the sea charts and intelligence she had just bought on Clover Island, and then began to analyze them seriously. Others were also making preparations before departure. Hmm. Look, everyone, from the intelligence I collected, I analyzed that the ocean currents around this Sixus Island are very strange. All objects approaching it will be dragged to Sixus Island by the special ocean currents. So everyone calls it an invisible cage on the sea. People who enter it can't get out at all, and can only be forced to enjoy the last vacation of their lives. Fortunately, we flew there. Little Nami breathed a sigh of relief after analyzing it. Special ocean currents. It's really strange. This sea is so interesting. Kuina's eyes flashed with an adventurous light. Nami, is the direction okay? Ling Yan confirmed again. Don't worry, I know the climate of the nearby sea area very well. Even if the weather changes on the road, I can predict it in advance. There will be absolutely no problem. Nami patted her chest, full of confidence. Then let's set off. It's still early now. Try to arrive in the afternoon. After Ling Yan finished speaking, he instantly turned into a full beast form. Several girls quickly put their belongings into Nami's space, then swiftly jumped onto Ling Yan's back, tightly grasping the feathers on his back. Ling Yan, we're good, Nami whispered. Okay, hold on tight. Ling Yan responded, and with a gentle wave of his huge wings, he took the four girls into the air. The girls lying on Ling Yan's back smiled at each other, and then giggled at the same time. They were excited about the feeling of speeding and full of expectations for the unknown adventure. Ling Yan listened to the silver bell-like crisp laughter coming from behind, and was in a good mood, and the corners of his mouth could not help but rise slightly. The flying speed was not fast, because she had to cooperate with Nami to collect climate information on the road. She could keenly perceive the sea climate of the place she passed by, which was her unique talent. After most of the day, Nami suddenly felt something was wrong, and a solemn look appeared on her originally tender face. Nami, do you feel that the wind is getting hotter? Nohigo asked suddenly. It seems so, I have the same feeling. We are in the sky and the wind is so strong, but I feel that the wind is sticky. Desha said, and wiped her cheek with the back of her hand. This is a sign of the coming thunderstorm. Nami said with a serious tone. Ah, thunderstorm. What should we do? Desha suddenly panicked. Ling Yan heard that the thunderstorm was coming, and his heart was a little heavy for a while. The thunderstorm was not ordinary bad, but he believed that Nami could come up with a solution. Nami, can we go around it? Kuina asked. No, the thunderstorm this time is very large. Ling Yan, let's lower our altitude and fly close to the sea surface. Nami said immediately, with a calm face. Okay, I know, hold on. After Ling Yan finished speaking, he immediately began to dive down. The dive was very fast, and the four girls' ears were filled with the sound of rustling, and everyone's hair was blown up. Ling Yan had to descend quickly because he could hear the rumbling thunder from the sky. Just as he was close to the sea, the waves began to roll, the sky was slowly covered by dark clouds, thumb-sized raindrops fell, and violent lightning appeared in front of him. Ling Yan, this kind of thunderstorm is close to the sea. It won't be so dense at that time, and the power will be much lower. As long as we are not hit by the waves, we can avoid it. Nami shouted loudly. I understand, hold on tight. Ling Yan began to speed up and plunged into the thunderstorm. The four girls held Ling Yan tightly, and the big raindrops hit their tender faces head on. Their eyes reflected the flashing lightning in front of them. At this moment, there was no fear on their faces, and their faces were full of determination. Ling Yan was very calm, because the lightning was just as Nami said, 
the closer to the sea surface, the faster it dissipated, and the threat was greatly reduced. His body could withstand this level of lightning, but the four girls on his back could not. He swiftly dodged the layers of waves that hit him, and slowly, everyone's hearts were filled with fear. There was no more panic, but they felt that this moment was very exciting. Because they had already started laughing, a very happy laugh, fearless of the future. After flying close to the sea for about half an hour, the sky ahead finally shone with some dazzling white light, and they were about to come out of the sea covered by thunderstorms. Seeing this scene, everyone couldn't help but show joy on their faces. Re-entering the world under the sun, everyone felt like rushing out of endless darkness and diving into the warm embrace of light, and all the depressed emotions disappeared instantly. Yeah, we're out. Dessa shouted excitedly. Nami, you're so great, you really deserve to be our navigator. Kuina's face was also very excited. The experience just now was so exciting that it felt as if the lightning would fall on them in the next moment. He he he, of course. Nami was very happy. She felt that there was nothing more fulfilling than leading her companions through all kinds of extreme weather conditions safely. Nokigo now has a deeper respect for Nami. From watching her draw various sea charts when she was a child to growing up to be an excellent navigator, Nokigo has witnessed every bit of Nami's journey. Hey, 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 everyone, I'm also very good. Ling Yan pretended to be dissatisfied and pretended to be a little angry. Ha 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 ha, yes, Ling Yan is also very good. Yeah, I think Ling Yan flies very well. Ha ha ha, Lululu. The four girls knew that Ling Yan was pretending, so they all started laughing. The sea was still hot, and the sea was still clear. After flying for an unknown period of time, everyone felt that the sun's rays had turned yellow, reflecting a golden mottled pattern on the sea. At this moment, they arrived at a sea area with almost no wind. Ling Yan noticed that the currents below were all flowing in one direction. This must be the special current that Nami mentioned. This current seemed to be flowing very slowly, but it could be seen clearly, which showed how turbulent the sea was. If a ship entered here, there would be absolutely no way to get out in this situation where there was almost no wind. Ling Yan, it's right there. We are about to reach Sixus Island. Nami was so excited after seeing this current that she could not help but shout loudly. Instantly, the other three girls also seemed to be ignited, and their emotions became extremely excited. After all, the sky was gradually getting dark. If they didn't reach their destination, they could only continue flying in the dark, which was too dangerous. Okay. I'm going to speed up. Ling Yan responded, and then began to speed up without hesitation. Ah. So fast. This feeling is so great. Finally, we are about to reach the land. The four girls lay tightly on Ling Yan's back, releasing their excitement and joy to the fullest, and shouting wildly. Accompanied by bursts of screams, they were getting closer and closer to the legendary sea cage Sixus Island. After more than 10 minutes, they finally saw this mysterious island with their own eyes, the endless silver-white beach, sparse coconut trees on the shore, and many ship wreckages. Sri Lanka. What a big white beach. Seeing this scene, Desha couldn't help shouting. Sixus Island, there are no mountains. The sea charts brought back by those adventurers are wrong. Nami understood instantly when she saw the flat Sixus Island. We are going down. Ling Yan immediately rushed towards Sixus Island. Soon, the five children finally stepped on Sixus Island and stepped on the soft and warm beach. Hiss. This beach is really big. Nokigo murmured as he looked at the endless beach. It's getting dark. We have to find a place to camp first. Ling Yan looked up at the sky and felt the heat under his feet. He felt something was wrong. Soon everyone came to the center of the island. There was no trace of the beach here, and the trees began to become dense. But everyone found that there were not only no people here, but also no animals. Ling Yan also used his observation hockey to investigate and found that there were really no traces of animals. It seems that we can't hunt on the spot. Fortunately, we brought a lot of food. Ling Yan said after taking back his observation hockey. This island is so strange, Kuina's eyes flickered with curiosity. Everyone found a relatively flat place and started to build a camp. Nami opened the space door, and several children went in and moved things out in a hurry. Not long after, a tent was set up. In front of the tent, Ling Yan had already started a blazing fire. Next to the fire, 
pieces of bone meat were sizzling with oil, and the aroma was fragrant. I'm so hungry, Ling Yan, is this meat cooked? Disha's throat rolled, and her saliva was about to flow out. Hee hee, Desha, don't worry, let me try it. Nami's big eyes rolled around, and she picked up a piece of bone meat with one hand and started eating. The other three girls looked at Nami eating meat with big mouthfuls, their faces full of desire. Nami, is it cooked? Desha finally couldn't help it. Puff. Ling Yan couldn't help laughing and said, it must be cooked. Nami is teasing you. Didn't you see how delicious she is eating? She doesn't even have time to talk. Ah. Nami, you are so cunning. The three girls slapped Nami angrily. Ha ha ha. Who told you to be so honest? Nami was very happy. Come on, celebrate our arrival at Sixus Island. Cheers. Ling Yan raised the milk bottle. Cheers. Times five. Ha. It tastes so good. It's so cold, so comfortable. The milk just taken out of the refrigerator was cold and delicious, and everyone drank it happily. Then, in the cheerful atmosphere, everyone immediately entered the meat-grabbing session, taking a bite of meat and a sip of milk, it was really happy. A small banquet ended in a hurry, everyone. After eating so much, they were all lying lazily on the ground, looking at the starry sky and imagining the future. So many stars, so beautiful, Nami squinted her eyes, her eyebrows curved, and she showed a sweet smile. Yeah, so beautiful, Desha responded. Desha felt that it was great to meet these partners. Not only did she not have to go hungry anymore, but she could also adventure around the world together. She liked this feeling very much and her partners very much. Kuina thought that the outside world was really interesting. After just over a month, she was no longer affected by her father's words, girls can't become the world's number one swordsman. This was all brought to her by her partners. Nokiko looked at Nami, then at Ling Yan, Kuina, and Desha, and couldn't help showing a sweet smile on her face. Nami was the happiest because Ling Yan and her partners accompanied her to adventure on islands. She felt that she would definitely be able to draw a world map in the future. Ling Yan was thinking at this moment, where is the volcano in the East China Sea? He had been feeling something was wrong with his body lately, and he always fantasized about soaking in magma. The pleasant feeling made him moan unconsciously. He wondered if his body was going to undergo a transformation, or if this was a side effect of the fire phoenix fruit. He couldn't come to a conclusion at this moment. I'm sleepy, let's wash up quickly. Well, it's really late, and there are adventures waiting for us tomorrow. The five children lay down for a while, and felt that the food in their stomachs had been almost digested, so they began to take water from Nami's space to wash up. After washing up, the five children went into the tent and soon began to snore, with nasal bubbles popping up one after another. After falling asleep, everyone began to become restless, and their sleeping postures became, unbearable to look at. Late at night, the sea began to rise. The gentle sea water slowly submerged the beach, and then countless wreckages of various ships were washed ashore. But it was not just the wreckage of the ship that was washed ashore. The geographical location of Sixus Island is very special. It is already located on the edge of the doldrums. Beyond the doldrums is the first half of the Great Route, Paradise. It is precisely because Sixus Island is so close to the doldrums that there is almost no wind in the waters around the island. Even the ocean currents are affected by the doldrums, which creates this special current in one direction. Whether it is a ship in the East China Sea or a ship that accidentally entered the doldrums on the Great Route and escaped, as long as it passes through the Sixus Island waters, it is possible to be swept here by the special ocean currents here. It was already midnight, and the power of the surrounding sea currents reached its peak, so many ships that had sunk to the bottom of the sea or strayed into here were washed to the beach of Sixus Island by the current. Captain, we are saved. Captain Casey, we finally got ashore. Woo woo woo. Ha 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 ha, we have made it through the doldrums, we are indeed the strongest. Captain Casey happily looked at the island in front of him and stood up tremblingly. That's right, Captain, our vegetable pirates are the strongest. But, Captain, there are only seven of us left, Kira and the others are dead, woo woo woo. When they passed through the calm belt, they were all eaten by the sea kings, so miserable. After hearing this from the crew, Casey felt very uncomfortable. The eleven members of their vegetable pirates had gone from the West Sea to the Grand Line, 
and had experienced a series of baptisms on the Grand Line, and only then did they make a name for themselves on the sea. But now, in order to avoid being hunted down, they were forced to enter the Com Belt. Although they were extremely lucky to have passed the Com Belt, there were only seven of the eleven pirates left. How could such a result not be sad? Just when they were feeling depressed, seven super loud hunger sounds rang out. The faces of the seven people turned red. Now was the time to be serious. How could they be so unreasonable? However, the depression came and went quickly, and it was not the style of their vegetable pirates to be sad all the time. Okay, let's not think about that for now. The most important thing now is to fill our stomachs first, isn't it? Casey shouted to dispel the uncomfortable mood just now. Yes, I believe they also hope that we will not be so decadent. Yes, Captain, let's have a party. Oh oh oh. Banquet party. Ha 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 ha, then, let's move the things on top first. Casey laughed and shouted, he was very satisfied that his crew could still be optimistic now. Okay, Captain. Hurry up, hurry up, we'll go right away. The six crew members immediately ran to the pirate ship that was washed up on the beach and hung with vegetable heads. Casey was not idle either. He squatted down and touched the ground with his hands, and immediately used the devil fruit ability. Suddenly, countless vegetables grew from the beach. As the captain of the vegetable pirates, Casey is a vegetable man who ate the superhuman vegetable fruit and can produce all kinds of vegetables. The other six people moved the tools and ingredients from the ship down, and then began to pick the vegetables on the beach. It was obvious that they were already used to this scene. Captain, it's up to us next. Yes, you just wait, we will definitely make great dishes as soon as possible. Then I'll leave it to you, Kia, lol, Casey sat down on the ground and began to rest. He was too weak now. Kia and lol are the chefs of their vegetable pirate group, and they are also a couple. With the help of the other four crew members, delicious dishes were made by Kia and lol, and the beach began to waft with tempting aromas. Captain, all the dishes are ready, Kia said happily, and then wiped the sweat off his face. Okay, then, the banquet begins, Casey stood up and announced. Oh oh oh. Banquet banquet. It smells so good, Kaya, lol, your cooking skills are really great. The seven people sat on the beach and began to enjoy the delicious dishes prepared by the chef couple. At this moment, they threw all their worries behind their heads. They have not yet realized that this island will be a cage that traps their vegetable pirates. The next day, the sun rose from the sea. Sixus Island began to slowly reveal its heat, and the vegetable pirates sleeping on the beach were gradually awakened by the heat. It's so hot, Captain. Why is it so hot here? It was quite cool last night. Don't worry about it for now. This island is probably not normal. We have to repair the ship and leave here quickly. Casey looked a little serious. He remembered the current that washed them to the island last night, and suddenly felt uneasy. Okay Captain, I'll start right away. The big bear, the shipwright of the vegetable pirates, responded in a muffled voice. Then others began to help repair their pirate ship. In the central area of Sixus Island, Ling Yan moved away the foot that had been kicked to his mouth and got out of the tent. After yawning and rubbing his sparse eyes, he saw that the sky was slowly getting brighter and the morning sun was slowly rising. Everyone, get up quickly, aren't you hot? Ling Yan shouted into the tent. Ling Yan didn't feel hot, but he could also feel that the current temperature was abnormal. Ordinary people couldn't adapt to this temperature. Hmm. There were several sounds of girls waking up in the tent, and then four girls walked out of the tent. I guessed right, the climate of this Sixus Island is really wrong, Nami looked at the red sunrise in the sky and immediately noticed something was wrong. Then let's have breakfast first, and then take action, Nami, see if we can complete the measurement of this island today. Nokigao said. I know, Nami nodded. The others also nodded, and then began to pack up the tent and the things inside, and then Nami took out the food stored in the alien space. After the children finished their breakfast, they immediately accompanied Nami to start today's measurement work. This Sixus island is not very big, but there are no mountains on this island, so Nami can't climb up the mountain to see the whole island as before, so she has to work a little more this time. On the coast of Sixus Island, the vegetable pirates are hammering on their ship. Barbarian bear's skills are pretty good, and now they have almost repaired the pirate ship. The weather is getting hotter and hotter, 
everyone work harder and try to leave this island today. Casey wiped the sweat off his face and shouted. Yes, Captain. The six crew members replied in unison. The center of the island. Accompanied by her companions, Nami began to measure the map of the island, and the drawings were completed in Nami's hands. Nami is really great, Kuina, look, this sea map is so clear, and even I can understand the things on it. Desha praised a sea map drawn by Nami. Nami, Sigyu Yinai, Kuina was the same, feeling that Nami was really amazing. However, Nami did not respond to the praise of her companions. She was very serious when drawing the sea map. She didn't want her sea map to have a mistake. Slowly, the footsteps of the five children began to spread out of the island. At noon, Sixus Island entered the hottest time of the day. Ling Yan's situation was fine, but the four girls had already put on sun protection cloaks. But they didn't want to stop. It was not clear at night, and there was also a night climate at night. Nami had to record everything. On the coast, the vegetable pirates finally knew the abnormality of this island. Captain, what should we do? There seems to be no wind here. Lars stood by the boat and stretched out his hand to feel it. There was no coolness at all. Without wind, we can't sail. Captain, what should we do? Sure enough, it's not accidental that we were washed up on this island. This place is too close to the doldrums, so it may also be a windless zone. Moreover, the more important thing is that the current here is very abnormal. Casey said solemnly. What should we do, Captain? Wow, Captain, can we not leave this island? Don't worry, since we can get through the doldrums, we can definitely leave this strange island. Casey said in a deep voice. Casey's calmness calmed the other six people, but they were still very panicked. Let's go to other places on this island first, maybe there are clues to leave here in other places on the island. Casey looked at the center of the island and said. Yes, Captain. Times six. Then the seven people jumped off the boat and braved the hot weather to go to the center of the island to check the situation of the island. On the other side, Ling Yan and his group were drinking cool ice juice and rushing to the beach. They were about to encounter the vegetable pirates. It's really hot, why is the climate of this island like this? Dessa wiped her sweat while drinking ice juice. The main reason is that the location of this island is too special. It is close to the doldrums, so there is almost no wind. Also, do you remember the thunderstorm we experienced yesterday? Nami asked in a delicate voice. Of course I remember. How could we forget such a terrible thunderstorm? Kuina thought of yesterday and felt extremely excited now. At that time, I felt that the climate was very abnormal, hot and bad. In addition, the special currents in the waters around Sixus Island caused such hot weather on this island. Moreover, I judge that this Sixus Island was formed because of this unique climate and that special current. After explaining to her companions, Nami expressed her own judgment. Sigyu Yinai. So that's the case, Nami, you even know this. The other four looked at Nami with worshipful eyes. At this moment, Nami was simply a god in their hearts. There are, someone. Captain, look, there are five children over there. The sudden sound made Ling Yan and the other five people alert immediately. They looked in the direction of the sound and saw seven adults walking towards them exhausted. Ling Yan, what should we do? Kuina made a gesture of drawing a sword. The others also made a gesture of preparing to attack. Hey, we have no ill intentions. Are you the natives of this island? We just want to find out the situation of this island and leave here. Casey saw the children on the opposite side preparing to attack them, and then immediately shouted. Yes, we have no ill intentions, we will not attack here. The other members of the vegetable pirates also said one after another. Ling Yan and the other five looked at each other, natives. What the hell? However, they will not let down their guard because of this. The four girls also looked at Ling Yan, as if asking whether they should take action. At this time, the distance between the two sides was only 20 meters, and the pace of the vegetable pirates also stopped. What are you? Who are you and why are you here? Ling Yan looked at the leader and asked. Hearing the child on the other side asking questions, Casey was relieved. It was good that they were willing to communicate, so that they could ask for a way to leave this weird island. Hello, we are the vegetable pirates. Pirates. Before Casey finished speaking, Ling Yan and the other five became more alert and Kuina and Nojiko even drew their knives. No, no, no. 
Listen to me, although we are pirates, we have never hurt civilians, I guarantee it with my life. That's right, we really have no ill intentions. Quote. Please don't misunderstand. Seeing that the other side was about to start attacking, Casey and the other seven immediately raised their hands to surrender. They wanted the children on the other side not to be hostile to them. This scene made Ling Yan and the others confused. Would the pirates surrender so easily? At this time, Casey spoke again. Please don't misunderstand, we really didn't come to this island on purpose. We were forced to enter the calm belt to avoid the enemy, and we came here by accident. The current outside this island is too weird, and our ship can't get out at all. So, I want to ask if you have any way to leave. Sure enough, we were washed here by the current. Ling Yan and the other five immediately understood. Calm belt. Did you pass the calm belt? Ling Yan looked at Casey and the other seven people with a face full of suspicion. With so many sea kings in the Wufang, it is simply a pipe dream to want to cross, unless you have the strength of Pluto Rayleigh, otherwise. Yes, but we also paid a heavy price. Casey then told the whole story, and the expressions of the other members of the Vegetable Pirates were also a little gloomy. After Casey finished speaking, Ling Yan and the others were silent. Four companions died. So you just want to leave here now? Ling Yan asked. He does have a way to help the Vegetable Pirates leave, but this is not for nothing. Yes, yes, yes. If you know a way to leave, can you tell us? Casey felt hopeful when he heard Ling Yan's words and left. I do have a way to help you leave, but why should I help you? Ling Yan asked calmly. When Ling Yan said this, everyone in the Vegetable Pirates was stunned. Yes, why should they help them leave? I can, I can use the Devil Fruit to exchange for information on leaving the island. Casey gritted his teeth and said with a look of reluctance. Captain. Captain. The Vegetable Pirates were chased for this Devil Fruit and forced into the calm belt. For this, four of their companions died. Don't say anything, as long as we can leave here alive, we will make a profit. Captain Casey stopped the crew from speaking and said in a deep voice. The other six were silent. Yes, the current was too weird, and they couldn't row even with oars. The two of them were very happy. Ling Yan and Nami's eyes lit up when they heard about the devil fruit. These people actually had devil fruits. If there are devil fruits, then it's indeed possible, but I want you to pay first. Don't worry, if there are devil fruits, I will definitely take you out. Ling Yan thought for a while and said. The barbarian bear, who was carrying a large package, looked at Casey unwillingly, as if asking Casey's final meaning, and the other five members of the vegetable pirates were the same. In an instant, the scene became quiet, and Ling Yan and Nami and the others also waited quietly for Casey. Barbarian bear, give it to them. As long as we can leave here, we can continue our adventure with Kira and the others' dreams. Casey thought about it and made a decision immediately. Yes. Captain. Man Shang obeyed and took out a small box from the package and handed it to Ling Yan. The other people also thought it through. Their captain was right. As long as they could leave here, they could continue their adventure with Kira and their dreams. Ling Yan handed the small box to Nami, who excitedly opened the box. The three girls from Nokiko also came over. The four of them saw that there was indeed a fruit with a strange pattern in the small box. Is this the devil fruit? It looks so strange. Hiss, nigh, so the devil fruit looks like this. Several girls exclaimed, and Nami also looked at Ling Yan and nodded, indicating that the devil fruit inside was real. Okay, the deal is done, I will take you away from this island. Ling Yan said happily. Great, we can finally leave. That's great, I don't want to stay here anymore, Wu. When the people of the Vegetable Pirates heard this, their faces immediately lit up. They could finally leave this broken place and continue their adventure. This island is so hot, it's not a place for people to stay. Before leaving here, I have to check your pirate ship first. Can you take us to see it? Ling Yan said to Casey. No problem, let's go now. Casey answered without hesitation. Then, the vegetable pirates took Ling Yan and his party to the pirate ship on the beach. After more than an hour, everyone finally arrived at the beach. Look, this is our pirate ship, the green vegetable. How about it, it's domineering enough. Casey closed his eyes and said proudly. Puff. Ha 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 ha, domineering. Ling Yan and the five children looked at the green hull and a strange vegetable-shaped object hanging on the bow. 
They couldn't hold back and burst into laughter. Captain, stop talking. Captain, how can our pirate ship be domineering? The other six members of the Vegetable Pirates felt hot on their faces when they heard Casey's words. The name of the ship was too embarrassing, but Casey didn't seem to care. However, if you want to leave here, your pirate ship must be equipped with a flame drive device. Ling Yan put away his smile and looked at Casey. He planned to use the flame drive method to send the vegetable pirates out. Flame drive device. Man Shang, a shipbuilder, was a little confused. Yes, flame drive device. Then, Ling Yan told Man Shang the general idea. No problem, I can make this kind of thing. Man Shang promised immediately after hearing Ling Yan's request. That's it. You make the flame drive device first, and then I can send you out. Ling Yan said seriously. Then let's act quickly. After the members of the Vegetable Pirates understood Ling Yan's requirements, they found a lot of templates and other materials from the wreckage of the ship on the beach, and began to make flame drives according to Ling Yan's requirements. Looking at the busyness of the members of the Vegetable Pirates, Ling Yan could see from their expressions that this group of people was indeed a heartless adventure group. But a deal is a deal, and Ling Yan will never return the devil fruit to them. After working for more than an hour, a simple flame propulsion device was made, like aces. Brother, now that the flame device is ready, when can you send us away? Casey came to Ling Yan and asked happily. The members of the Vegetable Pirates also looked at Ling Yan with expectant eyes. Hem, it will be dark in three or four hours. Are you sure you want to leave now? Ling Yan thought for a while and asked. The members of the Vegetable Pirates looked at each other. Look, then Casey continued. Yes, darkness is not a problem for us, so we want to leave now. Okay, I'll send you off now, sisters, wait for me here. Ling Yan said and looked at Nami and the others and told them. Great, we can finally leave. The people of the Vegetable Pirates were very excited. Okay, then come back quickly, we'll wait for you here. Nami looked at Ling Yan and responded. Ling Yan nodded, then looked at the people of the Vegetable Pirates and said. Then let's go now, I have to rush back after sending you off. Then, everyone in the Vegetable Pirates boarded the ship, and Ling Yan jumped onto the flame-driven boat connected to the back of the ship. The people of the Vegetable Pirates were looking at Ling Yan, wondering how he would send them off. However, Casey thought that the guy below must also be a Devil Fruit ability user, and it was related to fire. Thinking of this, Casey had some different thoughts in his mind. Under everyone's gaze, a flame suddenly appeared under Ling Yan's feet. The flame passed through the driving boat and whistled out from the tail. The power generated began to push the green vegetable to slowly leave the coast of Sixus Island. Hiss. This guy is indeed a devil fruit ability user. The people of the vegetable pirates were amazed when they saw this scene. Put up the sails, I'm going to speed up. Ling Yan shouted at the boat. Oh, okay. After the people of the Vegetable Pirates put up the sails, Ling Yan immediately increased the flame output, and the speed of the green vegetable became faster and faster. At this time, Casey gave a look to Maniu and a few others, and then left Lar alone on the deck to watch Ling Yan, and they all walked into the cabin. About an hour later, Ling Yan pushed the green vegetable to the windy sea. Captain Casey, there is already wind here, and our transaction ends here. Ling Yan shouted at the pirate ship, and prepared to run away in the flame-driven boat. Ha ha ha. Thank you so much, brother. Why don't you come up and have a drink before you go? Casey said with a big laugh. Yes, brother, we don't know your name yet. Come up and have a drink before you go. The other crew members of the Vegetable Pirates also spoke up. No, no, thank you for your kindness. My sisters are still waiting for me. I have to leave quickly. Ling Yan said, and drove away in the boat. Hey. What if I say you must come up? Casey looked at Ling Yan fiercely, and then controlled the green plants to entangle the driving boat. Oh. I was wrong. You are not good people. Ling Yan's expression was particularly exaggerated, pretending to be very scared. Ha ha ha. Brother, come up quickly, otherwise. Casey said, and wrapped the vines around Ling Yan. Boom. Quote. Suddenly, a raging fire burst out of Ling Yan's body, instantly burning all the plants, and he also surrounded the pirate ship. The scorching heat boiled the sea water. How is it possible? It's so hot. What kind of fire is this? 
The people of the vegetable pirates were instantly horrified. This guy, he actually pretended to be a pig and ate the tiger. Help. Brother, spare us, we were wrong. Bah. Go to hell and reflect. Ling Yan spitted and increased the output of the flame again. On the deck, everyone wanted to jump into the sea to escape, but the wall of fire blocked their way. Miserable wails came one after another, but Ling Yan remained indifferent. A few minutes later, only some ashes of the pirate ship were left, and the vegetable pirates were wiped out. The two of them were so busy that they were so busy. I'm back. Before Ling Yan reached the coast, he shouted at the top of his lungs, and then rushed to the shore. I thought you would wait until dark to come back. By the way, Ling Yan, did the people from the vegetable pirates leave at night? Nami asked crisply. She had a good impression of the people from the vegetable pirates, after all, they gave them a devil fruit. Well, they left, and now even their ashes can't be found. Ling Yan said frankly. Ah, what happened? What happened? Did the vegetable pirates break their promises? Nami and Nakiko asked in unison, and Kuina and Dessa also looked curious. Having been with Ling Yan for so long, they certainly understood what he meant. Well, I really misjudged you this time. Then, Ling Yan told them everything about the annihilation of the vegetable pirates. We really can't trust them. Nami was a little angry. She just thought that the vegetable pirates were good people, but they got slapped in the face too quickly. Next time we meet pirates, we will just kill them. Kuina said angrily. Nokigo and Dessa also looked angry. After Ling Yan left, they discussed that there were good people among the pirates. Now they found that they were deceived, and they were very unwilling. Okay, this time we have no experience. We just don't trust these pirates in the future. No, we can't trust people we are not familiar with. Ling Yan comforted the girls and gave them a shot of prevention. That's right, and we are still young now. These adults are the best at lying. Nokigo was still a little angry. Yeah, Nokigo is right. When I was on Clover Island, the adults often lied to me. It was so hateful. Dessa was angry, her little face full of anger. Several girls agreed and nodded. They decided not to trust these strangers anymore. Okay, don't be angry. It's almost dark. Let's go back to the camp first. Ling Yan hurriedly stopped, the sun was about to fall below the sea level. Okay, let's go back first. Nami also felt that it was really late, and she didn't care about the vegetable pirates anymore. Then she opened the space door, and with the help of Nami's space, everyone quickly returned to the camp in the center of the island. After returning to the camp, the sky was completely dark. Because of the appearance of the vegetable pirates today, Nami's sea chart was still partly unfinished, and she could only wait until tomorrow to complete the rest. After dinner, the five children started to get busy with their own things. Kuina and Nojiko started to practice, Nami had to sort out today's drawings, Dessa also started to read the medical book, and Ling Yan also wanted to learn some knowledge here. By the way, Nami, I haven't seen the devil fruit I got today. What does it look like? Ling Yan suddenly remembered that the vegetable pirates also gave them a big gift, but he didn't know what this gift looked like. Hearing Ling Yan's words, Nami stopped drawing, and Dessa also closed the medical book. Of course, they were very curious about the mysterious sea treasure of the devil fruit. Speaking of this, Ling Yan, come and see what this devil fruit can do. Nami said excitedly. Since she knew the preciousness of the devil fruit, she felt that the devil fruit was the most valuable treasure in the world. Then Nami took the small box containing the devil fruit out of the different space. After Ling Yan opened it, a fruit covered with strange patterns was lying quietly in the small box. He took it out and looked at it carefully. He was sure that it was not an animal fruit, but Ling Yan didn't know what its specific ability was. He could only wait and see if he could get the devil fruit encyclopedia in the future. How about it, Ling Yan, do you know what kind of devil fruit this is? Nami's little face was full of expectation, and Desha also came over curiously. Ling Yan shook his head and said, I can't tell either. It seems that I have to find a devil fruit encyclopedia in the future. Otherwise, if I get a devil fruit in the future, I don't know what its ability is. Nami nodded in agreement. After all, only by knowing the ability of the devil fruit can we know its value. At that time, whether it is given to the companions to eat or how to deal with it, they can feel more at ease. 
Desha, who was standing aside, had a very strange feeling at this time. When she saw this devil fruit for the first time today, she seemed to hear in her heart. A strange voice, that voice is like a magic, tempting me to eat this devil fruit. Now seeing this devil fruit, that feeling comes back, I really want to bite it. Daisy, what's wrong with you? Nami saw that Daisy's eyes were a little dazed, and then asked. Seeing Daisy like this, Ling Yan seemed to understand something, he asked. Daisy, do you want to eat this devil fruit? Hey, how did you know? Daisy saw that her thoughts were guessed, and she was a little shy, Omega. Pinch, Ling Yan, why don't you give this devil fruit to Daisy, so that she will have the strength to protect herself in the future? Nami felt that this devil fruit seemed to be good for Daisy to eat, although she didn't know what ability it was, but Ling Yan said that no matter what ability was developed, it would not be bad. I think it's okay, Daisy, you can eat this devil fruit. Ling Yan agreed of course. The devil fruit itself has its own will. The look in Disha's eyes just now seemed to be influenced by the will of the devil fruit, which means that the ability of this fruit should be very suitable for Desha. Hey, is this really okay? Desha suddenly felt a little confused. She now knows the value of the devil fruit. Whether it is sold or not, this fruit is a great fortune. Now her friends actually let her eat it. Although she wants to eat it, but, there are so many berries, she feels a little distressed. Of course, maybe the ability of this devil fruit is very suitable for you. Ling Yan said with a smile. Then, I eat it. Desha happily took out the devil fruit and asked again. Ling Yan and Nami nodded, indicating Desha to eat it. Under the encouraging eyes of Ling Yan and Nami, Desha hummed heavily, and then took a bite. Don't. Don't spit it out. You know, you spit out 10 million berries. Nami said immediately when she saw Desha's face change. 10 million berries. That's right. This is a devil fruit. A great treasure worth at least 100 million berries. She can't waste it. Thinking of this, Dessa endured the psychological and physical discomfort and ate the devil fruit mouthful by mouthful, leaving no fruit stems behind. Seeing that Dessa had finished eating, Nami immediately took out a bottle of milk and handed it to Dessa. Here, Dessa, wash your throat. Dessa was not polite and immediately drank the milk clean. At this moment, she felt that she was really alive now. It's so scary, what on earth is this taste, Dessa said with lingering fear. The fruit was eaten in a big way, but it was not easy to eat. Hearing Disha's complaints, Ling Yan and Nami both laughed. We all ate the whole fruit, and as our partner, you should also eat it all, so that we can share the happiness together. How is it, Desha, do you know what the power of the devil fruit you ate is now? Nami asked in a low voice. Desha lowered her head and thought for a while after hearing Nami's question. After more than 10 seconds, she said, I already know, Nami, take out a fish for me. Fish. Although it was strange why Desha wanted a fish, she still took out a fish that was still alive and kicking from the other space and gave it to Desha. Nami, Ling Yan, come and see, this is my ability. Desha put the fish on the table and said to the two people next to her. Ling Yan and Nami were also aroused by Desa's operation, and then walked to the side of the table, looking forward to Desa's next move. Desa put her hands together and made a strange gesture, then opened them to both sides, and a circular space appeared in front of the three people, and the fish was also shrouded in this strange circular space. Ling Yan and Nami were immediately very surprised, and Ling Yan even thought, how could this be so similar to Luo's ability of the surgery fruit? But Desa did not explain. Under the gaze of Ling Yan and Nami, her ten fingers on both hands turned into scalpels of various shapes at this moment. Then, she stretched her hands into the circular space, and the scalpels turned into ten fingers began to flexibly cut the fish on the table. After a while, Desa finished dissecting the fish, and directly separated every part of the fish, and not a drop of blood was shed. Hiss, little Nami was directly shocked by the scene in front of her. Ling Yan is now more certain that the fruit that Desa ate must be related to the surgery fruit. Next, Desha presented the most peculiar scene to Nami and Ling Yan. Desha danced with her ten fingers and reassembled the dismembered fish. Moreover, after the fish was reassembled, it was still alive and kicking. At this moment, Ling Yan could be sure that Desha's ability must belong to the lower level fruit of the surgery fruit. Desha, 
so amazing, what exactly is your ability? Nami was so shocked by Disha's magic operation that she couldn't close her mouth. After a long time, she came back to her senses and asked. He he he, the fruit I ate is a superhuman dissection fruit. As long as it is in the circle I created, no matter what object it is, I can dissect it, and after it is reassembled, it can still jump around. Isn't it amazing? At this moment, Desha couldn't help but feel a little proud. This devil fruit is so suitable for her. If she becomes a doctor in the future, she can dissect all kinds of things. The anatomy fruit. What a fitting name, hee hee, Desa, you may really become our doctor in the future. Nami said happily. Yeah, don't worry, I will definitely work hard to learn more medical knowledge. Desa said seriously. Ling Yan suddenly remembered that more than a month ago, when Desa was interested in medical skills, she had already shown a strong interest in anatomy, and even began to study whether she could survive after cutting off her intestines. Anatomy Fruit Most of the devil fruits have their own will, and they will find the most suitable owner for themselves. Come on, our doctor, Ling Yan applauded Desa. I will. Desa answered with a firm expression. After finishing all this, it was already past 9 o'clock in the evening. Ling Yan and the other two were also ready to wash and go to bed, but Kuina and Nokigo were still practicing in the woods and had not returned. Nami, you two wash first, I'll go see Nokigo and the others. Ling Yan said. Okay, then, let's wash first, Desha. Nami and Desha entered the alien space. Ling Yan. Nami. Desha. Come out and see what this is. Suddenly, Kuina's excited shout came from far outside the tent. This voice also called out Nami and Desha who had just entered the alien space. Then the three of them walked out of the tent with strong curiosity, and saw Kuina and Nokiko running towards the tent, with Kuina holding something high in her hand. Devil Fruit. The three people at the door of the tent saw Kuina running closer and spoke in surprise at the same time. The two panting girls stood in front of Ling Yan and the other two, their faces were already pale because of the rapid running. And turned red with excitement because of discovering the devil fruit. That's right, look, it's the devil fruit. Kuina handed the devil fruit to Ling Yan. Ling Yan took the devil fruit, and Nami and Desa also stepped forward. This devil fruit is green all over, and the pattern on it is also green. The shape of the whole devil fruit is very similar to a vegetable. This can't be the vegetable fruit of the captain of the vegetable pirates. Little Nami exclaimed. No wonder she said that, because this devil fruit really looks like a vegetable, and they know there is such a thing as a vegetable fruit. Yes, Kuina and I thought so too. I just finished practicing with Kuina, and then I found it on the way back. Nohigao said quickly, and her heart was still pounding with excitement. It must be the vegetable fruit. I didn't expect it to reappear on this island. Ling Yan said very confidently, and he was also very surprised that this vegetable fruit appeared on Sixus Island. Hee <laughs> hee, now we have two devil fruits. Kuina was very happy, this is a secret treasure of the sea. No, no, there is only one now, because the one we got during the day has been eaten by Desa, Nami corrected. Huh, did Desa eat it? Desa, what ability does that devil fruit have? Nokigo's tone was a little surprised and curious. The same was true for Kuina, as they had discussed it for a long time during the day. It's a superhuman dissection fruit, an ability that suits me very well, hee <laughs> hee. Desa said with satisfaction. Dissection fruit. Asterisk 2. That's right, Kuina, Nokigo, let me tell you, Nami told the two about Desa's dissection of a live fish just now. Sukuni Aikainai, this ability is indeed very suitable for Desa. Nokigo was very surprised after hearing this, and was also very happy that his partner had obtained an ability that suited him. So will our team have a doctor in the future? Kuina suddenly asked with her eyes brightened. That's right, but this doctor has to wait until Desha learns enough medical knowledge before she can be competent. Ling Yan's words directly determined Desha's future position in their team. That's great, Dr. Desha, keep up the good work. Come on. The five children all thought that today was their lucky day because they got two devil fruits. Now Ling Yan, Nami, and Desha have all got abilities that suit them. Kuina wants an animal fruit, but Nokigo doesn't want to eat it. This vegetable fruit can only be taken back. They think that Belmir might be able to eat it. 
Then the children quickly washed off their sweat and fell asleep soon, with candies and ice cream in their dreams. The next morning, the sun shone on the island. Everyone got up early, and after breakfast, little Nami took the tent back to the space because they were leaving Sixus Island today. Nami has already recorded the climate here, and only a small part of the drawings has not been drawn. Nami can finish this part of the drawings this morning. At around 9 o'clock in the morning, Nami had finished drawing all the sea charts of Sixus Island and the surrounding sea areas. Huh. Finally finished, it's so hot, Nami let out a long breath put the finished drawings into the alien space, and took out ice juice for everyone. At this moment today, each of them has drunk several cups. It's so hot, no wonder no one lives on this island. Kuina said while drinking the cool ice juice. Can we leave now? Desha said while wiping the sweat from her collarbone. In the past two days, she either sweated or was on the way to sweat every morning when she got up. Yeah. According to the geographical location of Sixus Island, Kumate Island is to the north of Sixus Island. Lingan, let's go. Nami pointed in a direction and said. Okay, then let's go. Lingan didn't hesitate. The four girls couldn't stand such hot weather. He walked a little further away, and suddenly turned into a full beast form. Then he extinguished the flames on his body and said, Okay, come on up, brother will take you for a ride. Hee hee, brother, I'm coming. Go. Watch me. I'll jump. The four girls jumped onto Ling Yan's back in one leap. Then Ling Yan took Nami and the others and flew into the sky like a roar. When they were out of the waters of Sixus Island, the annoying heat finally disappeared. Wow, this wind is so comfortable. It's been so hot in Sixus Island these two days. Flying high in the sky, the girls felt refreshed. Hold on tight, I'm going to speed up. Ling Yan shouted to the people on his back. Okay, let's hold on tight. The four girls understood and all lay down together to hold the feathers on Ling Yan's back tightly. Then Ling Yan began to speed up and flew towards the direction of Kumate Island. Sixus Island was not far from Kumate Island, and it would take two or three hours at Ling Yan's speed. On the way, Nami also kept an eye on the direction and asked Ling Yan to adjust from time to time. At about noon, the five people finally saw a small island. Ling Yan, this should be here, we can go down. Nami looked at the island below that looked like a bear's paw and shouted to Ling Yan. Okay, hold on. Hmm. As Ling Yan descended quickly, everyone saw the full picture of Kumate Island. It really looked like a huge bear's paw. In the end, Ling Yan chose a hilltop with relatively sparse trees as the landing point and stopped here with the four girls. Nami and a few others jumped down from behind Ling Yan and looked at the island with curiosity. After Ling Yan turned back into human form, he also came to a few people. Hmm, there are many animals on this island, and there is one that is relatively large, but no trace of humans was found. Ling Yan sent out his observation hockey to explore. Big. Is it the Beast King? Kuina asked excitedly with shining eyes. We don't know yet, Nami, let's go to the place where animals are densely populated first. Ling Yan pointed in a direction and suggested. The four girls nodded, and then walked towards the area Ling Yan mentioned. This island is not big. From the highest mountain top, you can see the whole picture of Kumate Island. I believe Nami will be able to finish the sea map here soon. After walking for a while, Ling Yan and the other five saw many birds, and they were actually fighting with a big strange bird. Seeing this big strange bird that can't fly, Ling Yan finally remembered that this is not the place where Buggy was beaten to after losing the middle part of his body. When Buggy was knocked here, he met a young bird the same size as him. He was so hungry that he wanted to catch the young bird and roast it for food, but he was later discovered by the young bird's mother, the big monster bird that Ling Yan and the others saw now. Then Buggy was chased by the big monster bird for a long time. If it weren't for Altari who came here to save him after eating the slippery fruit, Buggy, the future four emperors, would have been trapped here. It turns out that it's not the Beast King, Kuina was a little disappointed when she saw that it was a bird. Let's go, Nami, we can start, Ling Yan turned around and said to Nami. Yeah, Nami hummed. Then Nami opened the alien space, and the five children quickly came to the highest mountain on the island through the alien space. Wait for me, I will finish the painting soon. Nami said while moving the tools out of the alien space. 
Don't worry, Captain Gurichi and the others won't be back so soon anyway, and it's already noon, we can stay here for one night before going back to Clover Island. Ling Yan looked up at the sky and said. Okay, then I'll start. Nami thought about it and started to measure the terrain of the island. Ling Yan helped on the side. Nokigo, Desa, let's go to other places for adventure. Kuina felt restless and suggested. Yeah, then let's go. So the three girls left excitedly together, they were going to adventure on this island. Time passed slowly, and Nami drew a picture after another, and the three girls were chasing the big strange bird at this time. Pulu Pulu Pulu. Hem. Ling Yan heard the Den Den Mushi ringing, and immediately took it out to answer it. Then the voice of Captain Gurichi came. Ling Yan, the celestial dragons are coming to our East China Sea, and their goal is Clover Island. Do you think this is because of the orange business? Captain Gurichi said quickly and nervously. Captain Gurichi, don't think too much. If it's really because of the orange business, the celestial dragons won't come to the East China Sea in person. You can ask Minister Sabella to ask the king. The king may know. Ling Yan gave Captain Gurichi a suggestion. I know about that. By the way, you guys should come back soon. Otherwise, if it's really because of the orange business, I'm afraid we can't handle it. Captain Gurichi said, but he was still a little worried. We know, let's do this first. Click. After hanging up the Den Den Mushi, Ling Yan's mind began to work. Celestial dragons. Maybe there's a chance to use it. The weather was very hot, but the weather was very good. Around 4 or 5 in the afternoon, Nami had already drawn a map of the sea area of Kumate Island. But at this time, Ling Yan fell silent as he watched Kuina and the other two dragging a huge, plucked out bird. Would Buggy not be chased by the bird in the future? Are they helping Buggy in disguise? Hiss. This domineering luck is really terrible. Ling Yan, Nami, let's eat this tonight. Kuina shouted excitedly from a distance. You don't know, this big bird is so hard to catch, it's so fast, the three of us chased it for a long time, but we didn't expect it to die and jumped off the cliff and died, after walking in, Nokigo said calmly. Ling Yan and Nami looked at each other tacitly, wow, they actually forced the bird to jump off the cliff, the violent girl is so scary. They were all carried back, so the food tonight can only be this strange bird. Then the matter of dealing with the strange bird was handed over to Desha, the user of the dissection fruit ability, and finally Desha dismembered every piece of bird meat neatly. When the sun went down, several children ate roasted bird meat, drank ice juice and talked happily about the future. At their age, they are not afraid of anything. After eating and drinking, everyone lay directly on the ground, squinting their eyes and savoring the deliciousness of the food. Ha! It's so comfortable, Nami, your door-to-door -door fruit ability is really useful, you can bring so many things wherever you go. Kuina sighed with satisfaction while touching her bulging belly. That's right, other people go out to sea with big bags and small bags, but it's so convenient for us to have Nami's door-to-door -door fruit. Desha said immediately. She never thought that going out to sea could be so easy, and she could bring so many things, and every time she went to a place, she felt like she was on vacation. He he he, of course, my door-to-door -door fruit is very powerful. Hearing the praise from her companions, Nami felt happy. By the way, let me tell you something now. We will definitely go to the Grand Line in the future, and we won't be able to fly at that time, so do we have to buy a ship? Ling Yan sat up and looked at the four companions and said. Hearing Ling Yan's suggestion, the four girls all sat up and began to think seriously. This time, they took Captain Gurichi's merchant ship to Clover Island, and then Ling Yan took them from Clover Island to Sixus Island. If they go to farther places in the future, it seems that they really need a ship. Although it is very comfortable to fly with Ling Yan, the wind is not very good after blowing in the sky for a long time. I agree, we do need a ship. I have read the information. The weather on the Grand Line is very complicated. It will be more suitable for us to take a boat on the adventure. Nami said seriously. As a navigator, Nami knows more about the horror of the climate on the Grand Line. If they rush around like they are now, there will definitely be problems. The other three looked at each other and nodded, thinking that they really needed a ship. Well, it's passed unanimously. Next, it depends on the Tianlong who is coming to the East China Sea. I hope he will be obedient, hee hee, Ling Yan said with a sly smile. 
He has already thought of a plan this afternoon, and then they will sail around the world unimpeded. The Celestial Dragons. The Celestial Dragons are coming to the East China Sea. Is it because of Captain Gulaki's orange business? What's going on? The three girls who went bird walking in the afternoon didn't know about the Celestial Dragons, so they turned to ask Ling Yan. Then Ling Yan told them about Captain Gulaki's afternoon phone call, and explained the plan in detail to the four girls. This time the plan was well planned, and even if they were exposed in the future, they would not have to worry about the pressure from the Navy. After listening to Ling Yan's plan, the four girls' eyes lit up. Can they act openly in the future? After washing up, the five children studied for a while and immediately fell into a sweet dream. No one practiced today, so they had to stay alert and wait until they returned to Clover Island. They still had things to do. The next morning, Ling Yan and the others had just gotten up when Captain Gulaki called. He had already found out with Minister Sabella that the Celestial Dragons came to the East China Sea not because of the oranges, which made Captain Gulaki feel much more relieved. But Captain Gulaki still hoped that Ling Yan and his team could return as soon as possible, because the orange business had already been fully launched on Clover Island. He was worried that the Celestial Dragons would notice this matter. Captain Gulaki also asked about the Celestial Dragons' itinerary. They are here. If nothing unexpected happens, they will arrive in two days. In this way, Ling Yan and his team will have two days to prepare their plans. In this way, under the urging of Captain Gulaki and the plan of Ling Yan and his team, the five children returned to Clover Island at noon. What? Are you saying that the king wants to give up the throne to Minister Sabella while the Celestial Dragons are here? But what does this king want? Ling Yan was a little surprised and didn't understand. The four girls were also confused. The king's throne was going to be given up. What a crazy king. Minister Sabella didn't tell me this, but after Minister Sabella becomes king, I'm worried that our business will be affected. Captain Gulaki was worried when he thought of this. Don't worry about this, Captain Gulaki, we will solve it when the time comes. That's it for today. If you find out anything, remember to tell us. We're leaving first. Ling Yan was ready to say goodbye. What he wanted to know today was clear. Okay. Then you guys be careful, because the Celestial Dragons are coming, and there are many more people from the world government here. Captain Gurichi instructed. The five children nodded to show that they understood. Of course, those extra people were the CP organization of the world government. Ling Yan knew this as soon as he returned to Clover Island. However, these people were not elite, and the powerful ones were on the Celestial Dragons ship to guard at any time. Nami opened the space gate and then returned to the mountain through the space gate. In fact, Ling Yan's plan was also very simple, which was to use Nami's gate gate fruit ability to kidnap the celestial dragon, and then see if he could control this celestial dragon and make this celestial dragon their background. How to control the celestial dragon is even simpler, because like the operation fruit, taking out someone's heart can also be done by Disha's anatomy fruit. Compared with the Operation Fruit, the Anatomy Fruit only lacks an immortal operation and the range of the circle is smaller. This matter must not be told to Captain Gurichi and others. When Ling Yan told his companions at that time, the four girls were very surprised. It is because they have become much braver following Ling Yan during this period of time, otherwise they would not have such courage. Daisy, it's up to you in two days. Ling Yan looked at Daisy expectantly. Yes. Don't worry, I have practiced many times. Daisy patted her chest with confidence. The boat was packed with people, but the boat was packed with people. Ling Yan and his children prepared for two days and finally waited for the Tianlong people's ship to dock. Now there are many people in the port, and it is very quiet. The people are both scared and surprised. The Tianlong people are gods in this world. How can they not be surprised when gods come to their country? Except for the king and nobles of the kingdom, everyone else knelt down at the port, but even the king and nobles had to bow. From the port to the street, and then to the king's palace, this section of the road has been covered with clean carpets. On both sides of the carpet, there were also crowds of people kneeling. After the king gave a brief welcome speech to the Tianlong people, the Tianlong people came out of the cabin. They were an old man with a gray beard, a fat body, a white space suit, and a glass cover on his head. Is this the celestial dragon? Why does he have to wear a glass cover? Isn't it tiring? 
It seems, the celestial dragon is no different. That's right. In the alien space, the four girls saw the legendary celestial dragon for the first time and were discussing their appearance. They felt that the celestial dragon was no different from them. The celestial dragon is just an ordinary person, of course there is no difference, circle dot operator o circle dot operator. No, there is one thing that is different, there are many mentally retarded people among the celestial dragon, Ling Yan thought of the mentally retarded appearance of Charlos and quickly changed his words. Mental retarded. Asterisk 4. You will understand this later. Let's go. Let's go to the palace first. Ling Yan said. Oh. Okay. After Ling Yan finished speaking, the five-member team immediately left the port through the alien space and prepared to ambush the palace first. After waiting for most of the day, Ling Yan and his team finally waited for the banquet to welcome the celestial dragon to end. This banquet greatly satisfied the vanity of the nobles. Especially those beautiful ladies, who fainted with happiness because of the favor of this Tianlong. The husbands of these ladies were even more excited, if their wives were pregnant with Tianlong's children. Until midnight, the hustle and bustle in the palace gradually subsided. At this moment, the palace where the Tianlong lived had been guarded by the CP organization. In the most magnificent bedroom in the palace, the Tianlong had driven away the lady who had just played with him and put her into deep sleep. He would not let these people stay overnight. Although this kind of thing is wonderful, he still has to consider his safety. In the different space, Ling Yan felt that the opportunity had come. Nami, it's up to you, put this old fat pig in. Ling Yan said to Nami. Watch me. Nami was very excited. She opened a large space door directly under the bed, and in an instant, Nami put both the person and the bed into the different space. After succeeding, Nami quickly closed the space door. It was at this time that countless CP agents rushed into the palace of the celestial dragons. However, they were stunned when they saw that even the bed was gone. The celestial dragons were gone. Then a man wearing a strange mask walked in. Under the mask, his ugly face was changing back and forth. Search. Don't let go of every corner of the palace. The CP0 shouted angrily. Yes. All CP members immediately took action. The nobles who lived in the palace tonight began to experience the most panicked moment in their lives this time. The celestial dragons were gone. While the CP organization was looking for the celestial dragons all over the world, the five-member team had now arrived in the dense mountains. Who are you? Do you know who I am? I am a noble celestial dragon, the god of you lowly people. Let me go and send me back. Otherwise I will let the Admiral of the Navy kill you. The Celestial Dragon was tied tightly to the bed, but he was not panicked at all when he saw the treatment he was receiving at the moment. Instead, he was extremely angry. In this world, someone dared to touch him. Daisy, start. Said expressionlessly. After thinking for a while, he took a piece of cloth and rudely blocked the Celestial Dragon's mouth. Daisy nodded heavily and began to use the ability of the dissection fruit. A five-meter-wide circle circled the celestial dragon. In the eyes of the celestial dragon from anger to horror, Daisy's ten fingers turned into scalpels. She divided the celestial dragon's body into three parts, and then carefully took out the celestial dragon's heart from the middle part. Seeing his beating heart being taken out, the Tianlong finally got scared, but he could do nothing now. Desha handed the beating heart to Ling Yan, and then began to assemble the Tianlong's body. After more than 10 seconds, the surface of the Tianlong returned to its original state. But the part of his heart was empty. After completing all this, Desha removed the energy circle, and her face had turned red because of being too excited. Ling Yan pinched the heart in his hand to feel the touch. Hum, soft, very good to pinch. But the Tianlong on the bed suddenly struggled violently in pain. He looked at Ling Yan in horror, not understanding why his heart was taken out, and even more not understanding why these people in front of him wanted to catch him. Kuina used a branch to pick up the cloth blocking his mouth. What are you guys doing? The Tianlong was really panicked now. He was not like Charlos, the idiot. First of all, tell me your name, surname and family. Ling Yan asked calmly with a stern face. My name. My name is Marcus Lingas, and I am a descendant of the five elders, Saint Mosh. Lingas did not dare to hide and honestly told his origins. Five elders. We are really lucky, we caught a big fish. 
Ling Yan's eyes lit up when he knew that this guy was a descendant of the five elders. As long as they controlled this guy, they could do a lot of things in the future. What are the five elders? Nami and the others didn't know. The four girls watched all this quietly. Although they had many questions, they were not in a hurry to ask now. Very good, from now on, you are our slave, and we are your masters. No matter what we ask in the future, you must execute it, understand. Ling Yan looked at Lingiz fiercely. What? Slave. Lingiz couldn't believe his ears. Ling Yan's face turned cold. Does this mean he disagrees? Then he began to tighten his hand around his heart. Ah. No, don't kill me. Ah. It hurts. Lindagus struggled on the bed, and the intense pain in his heart was transmitted to him. Seeing this, Ling Yan stopped his movements and said coldly, Why, are you wrong by being our slave? No, no. Lindagus replied in horror. But I see from your expression that you seem reluctant. Willing. I am very willing. This is true. Woo 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 woo. Ling Yan smiled slightly. Now that Lindagas's attitude was right, the five children were very satisfied. Successfully harvested a Tianlong slave tonight. The heart was in Ling Yan's hands, and Lingas became very obedient. Then, Ling Yan handed the ship's business to Lingas. Ling Yan hoped that Lingas would hand over the ship to the shipyard of the world government for construction. The only point was that the ship must have the same power as a warship. He also asked him to make an order that no matter where they go or what they do in the future, all the navy on the sea cannot stop their ship. And Captain Gurichi's orange business, this time it has really become the favorite orange of the celestial dragons, and no one else can or dare to touch Captain Gurichi's business. Lingiz readily agreed to these things. He is a celestial dragon, and it is easy to do these. Finally, Ling Yan asked Lingiz to leave a phone number to contact him, and sent him back to the chaotic palace. Ling Yan and the others were in a good mood. With a celestial dragon slave, maybe they could mobilize the admiral in the future. In the palace, seeing the celestial dragon appear, everyone in the palace finally let go of their worries. If they couldn't find the celestial dragon again, they were really scared tonight. Seeing Lingus suddenly come out of the corner, the CP agents were very shocked. They had just searched every corner of the palace. Saint Lingus, what happened? How did you disappear from the bedroom? The masked CP0 asked anxiously. Hearing CP0's greetings, Lingus didn't want to pay attention to him at all, and even wanted to beat him up. It was this waste who didn't protect himself and made him a slave. This was a shame for him, Lingus. He walked straight past CP0 and walked towards his bedroom. Seeing Saint Lingus leave without saying a word, the CP agents were very confused. After returning to the palace, Lingas thought about it and wondered whether he should let CP0 handle this matter. After all, those children were only 11 or 12 years old. With the strength of CP0 in the future, he might really be able to get his heart back. Thinking of this, Lingas suddenly became excited. He was a noble Tianlong, how could he become someone else's slave? In the different space, five children were observing Lingas's every move. After all, it's better to be careful. Ling Yan, will he tell others? Noki Gao was a little worried. But the next moment, Lingas in the palace began to scream in pain, and the CP organization guarding outside immediately ran in. They saw Lingas rolling on the ground, looking very painful. Saint Lingas. Saint Lingas, what's wrong with you? Doctor. Where is the doctor? Seeing Lingas like this, all the CP agents panicked, even the CP0 was no exception. In the alien space, Ling Yan taught Lingas a lesson and loosened his hand that was pinching his heart. In the bedroom, Lingas, who was already exhausted from the pain, felt relieved when the pain disappeared, and was also glad that he didn't say it just now. It turned out that what the boy said was true, he could really take his life remotely. Suddenly, he smelled a foul odor. Get out. With a roar, Lingas yelled at the CP agents around him, get out. Seeing Saint Lingas angry, all the CP agents were terrified. They ran out immediately without hesitation, because they just witnessed a scene they should never see. The CP0 also quickly retreated, but he was still observing closely in secret. What had just happened was too weird, which made him full of doubts and vigilance. Look, this way he dare not have any other ideas. Ling Yan said lightly. 
The four girls nodded in agreement. Their slave had just suffered extremely painful torture, and the miserable situation was simply outrageous. However, they would not feel pity for this slave. Seeing this scene, the girls also breathed a sigh of relief. They knew that this Tianlong slave cherished his life very much. They believed that after this painful lesson, he would never dare to have any crooked ideas again. Let's go. Ling Yan said softly. Hem, the four girls responded softly. So, the five people left the palace through the different space and returned to their room in the hotel. The riot caused by the disappearance of the Tianlong people has gradually subsided. After spending three days on Clover Island, Captain Gulaki and his crew had to return. This trip was fruitful. Captain Gulaki never dreamed that their oranges would become a favorite commodity of the celestial dragons. Now, he has even begun to prepare to purchase another merchant ship, because the current merchant ship alone cannot meet the growing needs of the nobles. Ling Yan, how did you do it? That's a real celestial dragon. He is actually willing to buy oranges from our Kokoja village. Captain Gulaki was horrified, with a little confusion in his eyes. Well, well. I can't tell you for the time being, Captain Gulaki. Anyway, the problem has been solved, right? So you don't have to think too much about the rest. Ling Yan's answer seemed a little mysterious. Well, in that case, I won't ask any more questions. Captain Gulaki responded helplessly. At this moment, he no longer dared to regard these children as just his juniors. After all, the strength they showed was too powerful and became more and more mysterious. Maybe it could be said that they were lucky before, but now, they can easily deal with the celestial dragons. All this made Captain Gurichi feel incredible. After a few days of sailing, the merchant ship returned to Kokoja village, and the five-member team returned to their original life. This voyage was fruitful. Nami completed the surveying of two islands, and they also got two devil fruits. This was a comfortable and exciting adventure. But Ling Yan felt that the discomfort in his body was becoming more and more obvious. He now understood that this was because his devil fruit needed to transform and evolve, so he was eager to find a volcanic island. As long as he undergoes a transformation, or nirvana, his strength will be improved. Thanks for watching, please subscribe and support our channel.